But I also think that Trump likely should have criminal immunity from this. Every okay. claim, all the major claims they made were lies. Giuliani is literally uh, just filed a settlement with that uh, Ruby Freeman saying that, like, yeah, I, I kind of lied, but like that's my First Amendment right. And you can't ask us a question about it. What you're saying, you're saying that the no. electorate slate, when they said we are the duly elected electors and it's elected not true. Yeah, man, uh, I hear we're talking January 6th. We're talking insurrection. We're talking 14th Amendment, Trump, all this good stuff. Maybe, yeah. I'm just kind of trying to see if there's any legal arguments out there that I'm not aware of. Uh, all of them. All of them, yeah. No, I'm, <laughs> I'm just kidding. I don't know. I don't know what you're aware of. So why don't you give me a rundown of what you're thinking and then I'll uh, I'll pop into, you know, kind of my thoughts on it and and see where we go. Sure. Um, so I guess uh, set it on January 6th or the events leading up to it. Um, my contention was that I think that it was obviously in a uh, attempted rebellion, attempted coup. I think that the um, elector slates plan that was kind of hatched up with Eastman I think that all of the uh, alleged election fraud that Trump and his associates tried to pressure election officials into accepting to overturn their election results. And then I think the way that Trump, uh, Eastman and Giuliani tried to capitalize on the chaos of the day to continue to push the vote back, I think all pretty convincingly contribute to what I would call, broadly speaking, an attempted coup. Uh, more specifically, I would say I would support the uh, indictments by Smith and probably the Rico case in Georgia, but yeah, it's broadly where I'm at. We can raise your focus on any of those if you want. Okay, well, the first question I have is: mm -hmm. so it's an attempted coup. How? What was the goal that would make it a coup? Mm. It would have been from a broad level, Donald Trump using undemocratic means to try to entrench his power uh, to circumvent the will of the American people uh, on more, I guess, precise like conspiratorial grounds. It would have been um, him taking knowingly false information to election officials in an attempt for them to change their votes. Um, it would have been him trying to uh, threatening to fire Rosen if he wouldn't sign a bullshit letter saying the DOJ supported his false claims um, it would have been the request for Pence to flip the vote, and it would have been the um, fraud that was committed when the false electors in seven different states claimed that they were the duly elected electors to transmit their votes to Congress. All of these things, I think, would, yeah. And then sure. I can be more precise or more macro if you want, I guess. No, I mean, let's just, uh, let's just go in on it. Um, let's start from the back, the, the false electors. Mm -hmm. um, the false electors have no power to become a slate of actual electors outside of an accepted reading by Mike Pence, right? Mm -hmm. like he would have to, in theory, accept that slate of electors. Yeah. And the only way he gets to that slate of electors is if there is a proper objection levied while reading the original slate of electors. Mm -hmm. uh, the objection is considered, the objection is accepted, and then the alternate slate of electors or the false electors are read in as an alternative, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so how is that a fraud that is commit on anybody at all? Because it requires a constitutional process by which it would happen. Um, because the, uh, the claims of those electors uh, were false. The electors were not duly elected to be representatives of their state. <clears throat> I believe on some of them, well, because they weren't, because the process by which a uh, state legislature uh, chooses their electors, has them meet in the Capitol building, sign off on their electors, and then transmit their votes to uh, NARA, that process wasn't followed. Sure. Um, that process wasn't followed because they were not certified by the state legislature. But mm -hmm. hypothetically, if the slate of electors originally certified was withdrawn, now, the, whether or not this can actually happen. I mean, it was broadly stated by a bunch of people on the right that they could definitely recall their slate of electors and do a new one if presented proper information. Correct. I'm not quite convinced that that's possible because there's not an obvious mechanism to do it, but there's not a mechanism that says you can't either. So we're in kind of uncharted territory. So I have a well, hard wait. time finding that's a- I don't know fraud. what you mean, un uncharted territory. There is a duly, slated, there is a duly elected uh, 
slate of electors that transmits their electoral votes. They all sign the document. They say that we are authorized to be representatives of the state. We met in the Capitol building sure. and did this. And then they sign that and they transmit that to NARA. The, the false slates of electors that were organized in seven states by Trump and his campaign were very clearly not true electors, even though they attested that they were. They did not meet in the Capitol buildings, even though many of them attested that they had when they signed it. All of this is fraud. You're literally signing to and attesting to a document. And then I believe it also be conspiracy or when you're telling somebody else to commit a crime as well or communicating to another person to tell them to commit a crime as well, that these are all like criminal activities. Yeah. <sighs> This is an easy thing to say, yeah, because there is a process by which this is done, created by state legislatures. However, the state legislatures have plenary authority over how they choose electors, right? Correct. Can we agree on that? Yep, I agree. Okay, so if a state has plenary authority on how it chooses electors, presumably a state would have plenary authority on how it recalls and selects new electors. Yep. So if the state were to have its original slate of electors rejected, mm -hmm. the state could, in theory, certify a new slate of electors, no matter what process was followed at all. And having a ready slate of electors sent in before the constitutional deadline for the electors to arrive would allow the state to authorize that slate of electors, no matter how they were formed. Because they have plenary authority, there no one would be able to question it. We're skipping a lot of the things, though. The, the state wasn't involved in any of this. It was Trump and his henchmen, right? But it like for instance, have I to could be say involved in it. Well, you, yeah, we did. We just said the state would have a process whereby they would call recall their electors, and then the state no, would. I didn't say they would have a process by which they would do it. I said the state has plenary authority to choose a slate of electors, which means that mm -hmm. no one could question the state legislature's ability to do so, including, mm -hmm. in theory, the state's ability to just certify this new slate of electors. Yeah, but the state didn't even, do that, though, right? Well, they didn't. So, but because, of course, they didn't do it. But if they had done it, they could. That's like me forging a signature and saying, like, if my mom had signed this, I could go on the field trip. So I just signed it because maybe in the future she'll sign it. But my mom didn't sign the field trip slip, right? Like, I agree with you that, like, if the... So I believe people want to go to Hawaii, for Only instance. Only if you went on the field trip. Well, but that's what he tried to do. He tried to go on the field trip, but they didn't let him on the bus because Pence said no, right? But that's not quite comparable because if you could have presented uh, this thing as an alternative and you just didn't present it because it wasn't acceptable, so you didn't go on the field trip, not because you presented it and they're like, well, this is a forgery, mm -hmm. you can't go, but because the original, the original option was taken. Mm -hmm. The alternative was never explored. So the false slate of electors doesn't matter. I, so I, I'm following you on part of this process, but I'm focused on the fraud part, on the criminal aspect here. Let's say, for instance, seven citizens got together in Georgia and they were like, we don't agree with the election results. We're going to fill out what we believe is our slate of electors and we are going to sure. transmit that to Congress. In that case, I think okay. everything you say logically follows. Um, they would look at them as they go to certify the vote. They'd look at it and they go, OK, well, you guys aren't the real ones. We tossed you out. Or if they say, wow, you know, we actually are changing our mind. We're going to withdraw the electors. We're going to make these guys the official electors. I think everything that you say follows. That's everything is fine. The problem, though, is okay. that those people that submitted it were private citizens. They weren't empowered by any state body or any state legislature, and they misrepresented, they fraudulently certified that they were duly elected and that they had met in the uh, state buildings and that they had filled them out and transmitted them from there. All of that is fraud. What, what about that is different from the scenario you just brought up with the independent citizens doing it? Because they attested that they were empowered by the state to do it, and they weren't. They had no authorization from the state. They were just private citizens. It would be the exact same. Their authority to send those votes would be the same as me and six other streamers getting together and just sending our votes from Florida. We have absolutely no assembly. We can't do that. Or we could, but we can't say that we're like duly uh, elected by the state to do so or that we met in the Capitol building if we didn't. That's all fraud. That's like super clear and easy fraud, I think. See, I disagree that it's fraud because the idea would be if you believe that there's election fraud, right? This is presuming that these people genuinely believe that there's election fraud. They genuinely believe that the slate of electors that was sent and accepted is false based on the fraud that was committed. Therefore, they're saying we are actually the slate of electors that would have occurred. Therefore, we're going to submit this alternate slate of electors mm -hmm. to the uh, to the vice president. And if our state withdraws the original slate of electors and accept us, there we go. We have it right. Yeah. But now you're talking about vigilantism. You're like you're trying to justify vigilantism. Yeah, of course. It's like saying, like, if I really didn't kill that guy, 
and I got sentenced to prison, well, obviously I'm not going to show up for the warrant. I'm not going to jail. I'm going to flee from the police. I'm going to do whatever I can to stay out of jail because I don't think I actually killed the guy. You can argue that like, sure, he's, you know, I don't know if that would be that obstruction. Nothing of the sort. That's exactly That's what you're saying because they committed fraud. They signed documents that were knowingly false. Okay. The documents didn't say we attest that there is a voter fraud. They said that we are the duly elected slate of electors. That was a lie. They said that we met in the Capitol building to transmit these. That's a lie. These are two instances of fraud. They might have believed genuinely that voter fraud had occurred, but that doesn't mean that they can lie and perjure themselves on other documents. The same as if I don't think I deserve that speeding ticket, I can't outrun a cop to try to escape him. Like I can't justify a crime because I think that it's not fair. There's vigilantism. Except that if, in theory, mm -hmm. the state were to re were to withdraw its original slate of electors, which was the plan in all of these states, that the state would review and withdraw their slate of electors based on evidence of fraud that they were going to be presented or were being presented or believed in, then they would have plenary authority to accept this new slate of electors, which would make it immediately not illegal. Is there any other instance we can imagine where you can retroactively undo fraud? Uh, fraud only exists if you fraudulently induce a result that provides either a benefit to you or a detriment to someone else. No shot. That can't be the case. I don't believe that. We can look up the criminal okay, statutes. Wait, wait, you're telling me, uh, hold on, to be clear, you're saying fraud is only fraud if it works? Fraud is only fraud if you induce a benefit or, or yes, actually induce a benefit or induce a detriment through a, through a knowing misrepresentation. Wait, so if um, I falsely sign a check, if I attempted fraud, sure, but it's, I mean, a fraud requires the deprivation of property right from someone or the increase of property right to you through a false statement. Yeah. So if I were to miss sign a check, if I were to fraudulently sign a check and try to cash right. that at a bank and the bank catches me, I haven't committed any crime because they didn't cash the it's check. An attempted fraud. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, in that case, I'm sorry. You can amend all my prior statements then, I guess, to attempted fraud. Does that meaningfully change the argument or? Well, sure, it meaningfully changes the argument because the the question is, <sighs> is it a fraud if it's legal to do the thing? But it wasn't legal. You're saying they could retroactively. Why is it not legal? Because they weren't because the duly, they attested to, they signed saying we were empowered by the state to do this and they weren't empowered by the state to do this. It didn't happen. But the state, the state could in the future do a new one and then choose them, but at the time when they signed, and they didn't, right? Well, actually, okay. if we, because we're gonna do the retroactive game, then, I mean, they didn't, so then you agree then it must be fraud since the state didn't do it. No, no, this is, uh, okay, so you presented this uh, analogy of going to a bank with a, with, a fraud, with a false check, right? Yeah. What if you went up to a bank with a note uh -huh. that said, uh, I'd really like it if you guys gave me $50,000. Uh -huh. And you hand that to the bank. Yeah. And the bank says no. Have mm -hmm. you have you committed a fraud? No, of course not. What have you said? I think you owe me fifty thousand dollars. Will you please give it to me right now? And you put that on the note and you hand it to the bank. Is that a fraud? They'd probably call the cops on you, but <laughs> no, that's not a fraud. No, I don't think so. They wouldn't call the cops on you for well, that. Well, they, they would because you no. look like a bank robber. But no, I'm joking. Yeah, they wouldn't. Yeah, <laughs> they, they're they're not going to. It's not a fraud. Yeah, though, you haven't committed right? any crime. Correct. Yeah. Okay, so you present an option to the bank. It doesn't take the option. What is illegal about that? Um, I don't know if you've, um, I don't know if you've committed any fraud or attempted fraud. You just said, give me $50,000. What if you, here's a question. What if you went to a notary and you got a signed piece of paper saying, uh, Nick Rakita says that he will give me $50,000 and here's his signature that I forged and here's my signature. And then you take it to the bank and you ask for $50,000. Is that fraud? Well, if you forge my signature, that's a different question, right? Is it? Is, did they, did they forge someone else's signature? Uh, well, no, but I mean, they signed something attesting to a false statement. Okay, what if I do, what if I go to a notary, I get a notary's document, I said, Nick Ricada says he's going to give me $50,000. Here's a promissory note where he says he's going to give me this. Then they'd either, I guess, give you the $50,000 or not, but that would be on the bank because- But it would be attempted fraud, right? If I, if I have no. this like a notarized, if I attest to this, if I bring an affidavit and I lie on it about who okayed something, this is attempted like fraud. Like a notary is just a recognition of the signature that's on the page. So if yeah. you notarize your signature saying, Nick Riccata says he's gonna give me $50,000, you give that to a bank, they're gonna say, so? Like, why would they give you $50,000? based okay, on true. them saying I would give it to you. Okay, sure. What if I came in with a check that I filled out addressed to me from you, I guess, and I filled that check out for you and I said, give me $50,000. You'd have to put, you'd have to forge my signature. 
Okay. On that um, check, right? Yeah, I guess. I'm trying to think of something that would make it analogous. The, the fraudulent part yeah, is that... Yeah, that's the problem, isn't it? Because there isn't an analogy because they didn't say anybody else did it. They just said, we are the duly authorized no, electors. No, 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 no. The, the problem... I can't think of an analogy off the top of my head because it's so obviously it's illegal. It's obviously fraud. They claimed that the state did something that it didn't. That's fraud. And then they signed a paper saying that the state said something that it didn't, which in my opinion is a little analogous to a check, but they signed a paper saying the state said that we are the duly elected electors. They weren't. And they said that they met in the Capitol building to transmit their votes. They didn't. They weren't even allowed in. Those are two instances of fraud. And they were encouraged to do that by Trump's campaign, which is a conspiracy to commit a crime, I think, right? Or attempted fraud. So yeah, it's like, it's super, just the attempt itself is illegal. Even if you're not successful, the attempt is still illegal, right? Uh, possibly. Okay. I'll concede that it might possibly be illegal for them to do so. Okay. Uh, I'm not quite sure that it's illegal for Trump to do so. It wouldn't be illegal to tell somebody to commit a crime? Isn't that illegal? <laughs> this is where it becomes complicated, right? Because... Wait, wait, yeah, let, wait, let's, let's leave this. Let's just go anywhere else. If I tell somebody to murder somebody, have I committed a crime? If I say like, hey, tomorrow you should go to John's house and kill John. No. That's not a crime. It's not a crime to tell people to commit crimes? No. Or to help people plan crimes? It depends. Th that depends on how far you go with conspiracy. Okay, what uh, if it goes go far to, enough that I give you, you a whole go to plan? Wells Fargo and Sioux Falls tomorrow and rob it, Destiny. There, I said it publicly. Sure. Okay, what if you give me like a plan to do it? What if you say like, you're going to pick up this uh, piece of paper from this area, you're going to go to this oh, area, okay. and then you're going to... Okay, so for instance, for See, Trump's campaign, yeah, they said that you seven people are going to meet here, we're going to give you the false paper to sign, uh, you're going to, uh, you know, get it stamped, and you're going to say that you're in the courthouse and then transmit it. They're committing fraud, they're being told to commit fraud. Some of these people attested they didn't even know they were committing fraud. Um, they, they did it at the direction of Trump's campaign. What part of this isn't a crime, or how is this not well, a crime? Well, if they didn't know they were committing fraud, then they've got a, you've got a real problem because fraud requires criminal intent. Um, I'm trying to think, hold on, no, 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 wait, wait, that might be true. But then, oh, it's definitely true. Sure, all, but, but, all, but, all but, that, but, but then it would just be mens rea. But that, sure, but then it would just be kicked up the chain, right? The mens rea would transfer to the person that encouraged them to commit the criminal act. Okay, now here's the question. Mm -hmm. Can Trump actually be party to fraud in this case is, is a real question. Because here's, here's the issue. So mm -hmm. we're hung up on this, this idea um, I'll say you're hung up on this idea. I, it doesn't particularly matter to me that there are these statements in their electoral, uh, uh, on their elector form that says they met at the Capitol uh, and that they're empowered by the state. They're mm -hmm. not empowered by the state, but they're presuming that they will be empowered by the state. And you've got this Wait, just to be clear, you're, you're saying they're presuming, but they, they attested that they were currently empowered. That's important, but go ahead. Because if they had said in the future, we believe we will be, then I don't think you've got the fraudulent element here, but go ahead. There's a complicating factor in all of this. And the complicating factor is that you have a time-limited constitutional process by which electors need to be submitted to the vice president, right? Okay. We can agree on that, that in December, I think it's 19th, the uh, slate of electors must be delivered. Sure. And these sl false slates of electors, in all cases, were delivered by December 19th, following that constitutional process to that measure, correct? Um, not all of them. I think Michigan and one other state, they tried to hand deliver it to Pence because they didn't get the mail in time or something, and Pence said no, but more or less, yeah, they tried to deliver them in time, sure. Right. So there's, there's this critical element here in which th this gets really deep into the questions of what kind of law interacts with what kind of authority that exists and what kind of processes need to be followed. The, the same reason that the Democrats uh, impeached Trump before he left office on January 20th, right? Um, they weren't sure if they could impeach a non-sitting president for acts commit as president because he's not there, so it's maybe mooted. So they, they made sure to actually file the impeachment papers even though the trial would happen afterwards. Um, in the same way, there's this question of whether or not a alternate slate of electors could be presented after December 19th because it would be outside the constitutional process. So there's a scramble to get these alternate slates in there. The question then becomes... If a president, if anybody, credibly believes that there is a fraud committed in the election process, but they're still trying to act within the bounds of the constitutional process that exists for selecting the next president, does a statement on a paper created by a state law process for picking electors that may not even be binding on the state actually matter in any real sense? 
No. Rather than the constitutional process that it's being followed. No shot. None of this is true. If you believe that the fraud happens, you, there are appropriate channels to pursue that. What's the appropriate channel? The appro one was the courts. None of no court would even accept a single case. They all denied them on standing and latches grounds. Uh, they did not deny them on standing. About thirty of them were denied on evidentiary grounds because they didn't present would any you? evidence. Uh, yep, yeah, that is true. Standing. We can go through case and case. There's conservative documents talking about every single case. The a half of these, the majority of the ones that were rejected, were done on evidentiary grounds. They try to evidence say that it was all in standing. Was never went. They, okay, so they said that there was not a claim presented upon which relief could be granted, which is a pretrial dismissal. No evidentiary. Uh, no evidence was actually weighed. There was no meritorious decision on a single election case. Okay, that's fine, but no meritorious decision doesn't matter if you're bringing a claim to a judge with no evidentiary basis and with insane cries for relief. When you're when the only remedy that you're looking for is the the flipping of the entire state electoral vote count, and when you're not bringing any evidence to any of these judges for it, of course they're going to reject these. But I'm sure that's standard okay, wait, practice wait, wait, for wait, any wait, case across the country. You're conflating yeah. things. What am you're I conflating? conflating well, you're conflating bad cases brought by people like Sidney Powell, acting and alone, Giuliani. by the way. Uh, I don't think Giuliani didn't bring bad cases. He made very bad arguments. He wasn't the one filing a lot of cases. He was brought into cases that were already filed. But there were meritorious cases that were brought that were dismissed on standing and latches grounds. One of them involving the Supreme Court saying that no one listed uh, the, the Texas versus Georgia case. Uh, saying that no enlisted had standing to bring this case, even though Trump was a intervening part or a, an impleting party to that. So they they literally suggested that the sitting president and the leading contesting candidate had no standing uh, to bring a lawsuit against a state for an alleged fraud in the election. I don't think he was um, one of the primary plaintiffs for that case. Doesn't matter. He was a plaintiff on that case. He was he pled or he was pled into that case. Well, if he was He's, pled into it, why didn't he file the case? Why would Texas have standing to tell Georgia how to run an election? Why would any state be able to tell any other state? I thought we lived in a federalist or a states' rights place, right? Why would we want any other state to to declare another state? how they well, should run their election process. Why don't you tell me what lawsuit should be brought if a state believes that another state has disenfranchised their vote, their electoral votes through their fraud? What is the injury the, to the, the state? Fraud. You have to prove injury for have standing. Well, how is Texas okay, injured so, by how Georgia runs their elections? Okay, so if Georgia... Wait, 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 wait. Hold on, wait, wait. I need you to answer that question. Tell me, how is Texas injured? How do you prove standing that you the, the, the thing affects you if you're looking at the state of Georgia? Because the voters of Texas have selected a person and the state of Georgia's fraud results in that person not uh, not being elected, instead someone else is, then their electoral votes are, the, their right to their electoral votes has actually been stripped of them by the fraud of another state. No, it hasn't been. The right of their votes absolutely. is that, absolutely not, you're completely wrong. The people in Texas were able to vote, their electoral votes are submitted to Congress, and their votes were counted. They don't have a right to determine how any other state does their vote. If Georgia wanted to, my understanding, if Georgia wanted to, Georgia could pass a law saying, we're always going to vote for the Democrats, and they would do that. I don't know if another state would have standing to say, well, that's not fair. Our votes aren't being counted because you're state is voting in a way we don't like see now you're getting back to that plenary authority argument sure where the states can pick whatever electors they want but they didn't in this case even though the people attested it doesn't to matter it matter if they did if well they it does pick whatever electors they want how can you have a false slate of electors that's a fraud because they weren't picked it would be like me holding someone up at gunpoint saying i think i'm going to be deputized so tomorrow harmed? so i'm going to arrest you now you can't do that who was harmed who was harmed where in georgia by the electors that weren't picked Where's the harm? The, well, the attempted harm would have been the the entire population. Why would be attempted harm? Because the entire population that voted in that state would have been harmed because their votes would have been basically discounted. Mm, wait, how, whoa, 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 no. If they have plenary authority to decide how they do elections, which is what you just said, Georgia yep. could say, we're going to vote for Democrats every time and no one could question it. Did right? Georgia do that? I don't know. You were the one who presented that hypothetical. No, the problem is that they claimed that the state legislature said that they could be the electors and they weren't. You're telling me it's you keep saying it's possible. Yeah, it's possible, but they didn't. OK, so who was harmed? Well, the attempted harm would be the voters. Why would it be harm? Because they voted one way and now their entire state's vote is going to be flipped because of fraud, because people that are trying to commit fraud against the state. But the state legislature 
could no but they did it you keep saying can but so they did it the fucking harm destiny the harm didn't happen because the scheme didn't work the harm didn't happen and if the scheme worked what would the harm be because the state would have had to actually select that slate of electors and the state has the authority to do so voters be damned so where's the harm but the the state didn't if the state did there still isn't harm that's the thing you're missing uh, if the state did accept them eventually the initial signatures were still fraudulent what they were attesting to was still fraudulent but, but where's the harm because if this wait, wait you can, accepts hold on. You, those, yeah the harm is the flipping of the vote that's the harm it's not a flip of the vote what it, it is a flip of a vote yeah no because okay let's say the state never chose the set of electors it chose sure and instead just chose this set of electors with the exact same data mm -hmm. is there harm uh, as long as the state is following the process by which they're supposed to do, then no. I mean, that's how the state runs their election. What process is the state supposed to do? Uh, I, don't, I don't know the line-by-line -line process in Georgia, but my understanding is that once you the vote know, is counted, <laughs> once the vote is counted... They have plenary authority. They can just select whoever they want. They literally can just select anybody. They I don't know if that's... I, I don't know if of that's the case in every state, but um, they, they could... It is the case in every state. That's the constitutional process. The state will choose... The manner in which it selects its electors. Okay, the state could choose the manner in which it sele selects its electors. Okay, sure. I, I don't, that doesn't get you any closer to your argument, though, because they didn't choose these people, and these people said they were chosen. That's fraud. It's not fraud. How is it not like fraud? <laughs> because they can be chosen. If they are chosen, there's no harm. If they're not chosen, there's no harm. There is no harm. If they, they, are, cho harm. If they are chosen at the White House, there is harm. That was the attempt. The attempt was to get Pence to choose these, not the states to choose them. I agree with you. Actually, the states the, wanted to choose another set I of disagree, electors. We well, are wrong, but, but the attempt was not to get Pence to choose the new state of electors. The attempt was to get an objection to the slate of electors that was presented, have that go back to the state, and have an alternate slate of electors prepared to be accepted by the state and certified immediately. That was one of multiple plans, but the one that they rent went with at the end, Away. the one that they went with at the end was that Pence would see two different slates of electors, uh, he would table those, then a debate would happen over which one was real, and then he would table that conversation. He would say, well, you guys can't figure out what's going on. Then he would throw it back to the House, and then House representatives, of which there would have been 26 Republicans and 24 Democrats, would have voted, and they ideally would have made Trump the president. That was the final plan which that they went with on the day of. A constitutional process by which that could occur, right? A constitutional process built on the fraudulent submission of the false electors. Also, and even whether or not Pence could even do that is probably not true. But, the, but this is oh, all built on the fraudulent yeah. process of the, of the fake elector slates. <laughs> so but you just laid out a constitutional process by which this can occur based on an objection and a competing slate of electors that the state could adopt. You're moving the past the adopt. fraud though, right? Like I, I could have fraud. like I could have sex with somebody if they consented, but I could just have sex with them and then maybe later on we could see if they could like you're moving past the crime, the fraudulent part. If they had indeed, let's say Georgia had said, you know you what, we're gonna send two them and, what? Nothing. That's a shit analogy, but go on. It's not what well, you, no, your analogy is ridiculous. They committed fraud. They attested to something that wasn't true. That's fraud. The people told them to do that. That's fraud. It was a fraudulent scheme to have a slate of electors accepted, saying that the state empowered us to do it. And you can say, Well, the state could, the state didn't. You could do a million things, but they didn't. And they still have it. So it was fraud. You must admit, at least now, that since they didn't, now it's definitely fraud, right? Can, is it like no. a quantum state of fraud where if your fraudulent scheme works, it's not fraud? And if it does work, it's no longer fraud? Or See, the problem you're at is you are operating backwards and presuming a criminal act and then retroactively going through the facts and determining that this leads to the conclusion that there is a criminal act that I have determined occurred. But if you start from zero presumption of innocence and you go do we get to harm for a fraud to occur no do we get to the possibility of harm for fraud to occur no because there is no way to fraudulently induce that slate of electors into legitimacy there isn't a possible way to do it because it requires everybody who would have to authorize that slate of electors to say yes through a power that they have for it to occur okay let me just get understand so what you're telling me. So you're telling me that attempted fraud can only occur if it has like a clear shot of working. Is that what you're attesting to right now? Attempted fraud can only work. Fraud, you can only ever be charged with attempted fraud if there's like a clear shot of it working. 
No, you're still working backwards from a front. Wait, wait, hold on. Okay. I'm, hold on. I'm working right at the start. You're the one that's working backwards because the start, you are, you are, because you're saying, well, they could in the future. That's literally the definition of working backwards. At the moment that they signed those papers, they said, we are the duly elected slate of electors from Georgia. You agree that at the time they signed that, it was false, correct? When they said, we are the duly elected yes. slate of electors, yes, that was false, right? Well... False is such a funny word, isn't it? No, it's it's probably an important word if you're making a legal analysis of something, whether something is true or false, I would imagine, right? We're ha you're hanging up on whether or not that language matters at all. So you think that any seven citizens in any state they want can say we are the duly elected slate of electors and there could be a thousand different transmissions of electoral votes to Congress every single year uh, from every state and none of those people would be committing fraud. They say, well, we're the duly elected slate of electors. Yeah. Okay. Um, because how do they become duly elected slate of electors? Because the state legislature, the electoral body says they nominate them. They appoint them. Yes. Nailed it. Yes. Right. They, they didn't do that here though, it. right? They have to certify it. Right? No, 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 no. You're wrong. No, no. You're going ahead again. It's not about, it's not about the certification of the vote. We're not even at that point. The I'm not talking about the vote. They have to certify the slate of electors. Correct. Okay. Correct. The state body does. Yes. Before it, okay. The state body yeah, did not certify these people. But they said Correct. they were certified them. Though. They said we were duly okay. elected. That's fraud. That's not true. That was a lie. They signed that. That's a lie. But the lie doesn't matter because there's no way for harm to occur unless the state actually adopts, well, which wouldn't be harm. The state would have to actually adopt them as electors. Okay. And then they would have to be accepted by Mike Pence for their scheme to work. They gotcha. have to okay. have those two things happen. I understand, that's fine. So then I just want you to Would tell you me- I fraudulently yeah. induce them to do that. Okay, then I just want you to tell me, I want you to say that there is no crime of fraud or attempted fraud if the plot that you scheme is unlikely or impossible to work. You can't charge somebody with fraud for that. That's what well, you're you saying. you charge someone with a lot of stuff. I don't know that you secure a conviction. So, it, it, so okay, let me be more precise. Fraud or attempted fraud, there is no crime if the scheme that you concoct can't possibly work. You have to, okay, so crime gets really complicated because you have to have a criminal intent. There was a criminal that, intent. The intent was to flip the vote of the state and, and to, well, no, hold on, I'm sorry, even past that. It's not, it's not the intent. That was the intent. The intent that, was, why do you think they had, they did an opposite slate of electors? That was the intent, was to flip the vote of the state, yes. No, the, the intent is to be adopted under the process by which adoption can occur, right? They wanted the constitutional process to be followed, but with them as the chosen slate, as the alternative. None of this has to do with their, the, they wanted their the contesting. Their contesting was that the original slate was actually based on fraud, right? Fraud. It doesn't fraud. matter. That's not the forum to address that. What is the forum? I asked you this earlier. What's I already, and I answered you. I said the forum was the courts and the secondary forum can be Donald Trump himself asking his okay. DOJ and intelligence agencies to go and investigate. Those are the two appropriate I, forums. Oh wait, Donald Trump asking the DOJ to investigate yes. is an appropriate forum? To look for that's voter fraud? Criminal, yes. That's one of the criminal charges against Donald Trump. You realize that, right? No, Jack it's not. Smith is, nope. Oh, wait a minute. Actually, it literally is. It literally is not. No, it is not. Jack Smith has indicted Donald Trump for investigative efforts into the election. No, he, he has not. He calls them, okay, wow. Which, we can go through the indictment. Which charge do you think is charging Donald Trump for investigative efforts? There's, there's, see, only, four, uh, there's only four charges on the Jack Smith indictment, so we can go over the charges if you want. But, go for it, read them. Um, so I'll read the things and then we can scroll down and see what they were for. So one is conspiracy to defraud the United States. Two is conspiracy to obstruct an official proceeding. Three is obstruction of an attempting to obstruct an official proceeding. And then four is conspiracy against rights. Um, I think hey, at the bottom- indicted on more than four counts. Uh, well, there is the Mar-a-Lago case there. And then there's a Georgia Rico Georgia case. Indictment? Yeah, the Georgia one might the have Georgia more. Georgia Rico case. That's the one where he calls uh, Raffensperger. Correct. Right? Okay, but remember, so, for, a, for a RICO case, all of the individual elements don't have to be crimes themselves. That's why it's a RICO case. So he might get charged in the RICO case. One of the underlying things might be investigating the election. But, that, but their argument for the RICO case is because this enterprise, member of an enterprise, was doing this in the furtherance of the crime that they were attempting to commit, right? Which is different than sure. the Jack Smith indictment. RICO cases are, are hilarious. And, and if this is RICO, that'll be really funny. Uh, I doubt, I doubt it. It, it. The funny part would be Rudy Giuliani's involvement. Of course. Make it a grand irony. Yeah. But, um, okay, so I'm thinking of the Georgia case where part of the, 
part of the allegation is what Trump would categorize as his investigation into uh, into this. Um, I haven't read through the indictment in a while as far as what the actual conspiracy entails, uh, but I believe part of it was what Trump, again, would consider his investigative power as the chief executive. Um, in the, the I think it's the conspiracy to defraud the United States one uh, because mm -hmm. they're talking about um, if I'm not mistaken, his inclusion or the inclusion of the January 6th speech is in there, right? As part of the conspiracy to defraud the United States. Um, on the Jack Smith one, I don't remember if the speech is here, but um, the I don't remember the investigative power. Are you thinking of I mean, when? Trump are you thinking of? Are you thinking of the investigative power? That see, <clears throat> Trump would state that he was following this process, his duty to talk about election fraud, right? Like that's, that's he's not being charged with his defense. speeches as well, though. Right. I think that's in part of the conspiracy to defraud the United States because his speeches are, his speeches both uh, on January sixth and his speeches subsequent to it on television. His his constant assertion that it's a fraud they, uh, it, is his, his, definitely his, included in the indictment. I don't believe so. The the indictment for the Jack Smith one wasn't talking about those speeches that he made to the public. He was talking about those same claims that he was repeating privately to pressure state election fish, officials to flip elections. I, and a lot of the statements were the same, but... Right. Uh, privately but, to pressure state election officials to flip the election. Now, what was he basing the pressure on? The, Jack Smith or Donald Trump? Trump. Uh, How's he pressuring them? He was basically saying that there's massive evidence of voter fraud. There's probably oh. criminal activity here okay. uh, that you guys need to look into this more and, you know, blah, 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 essentially. Okay, so Donald Trump is saying that we believe there's massive evidence of voter fraud. Uh -huh. We're asking you to uh, look into it more because bad things have happened. We have data that conflicts with your data, says that we win, right? Like, uh -huh. so how is that not him pursuing his investigative power as the chief law enforcement officer of the country. Because the onus on Jack Smith is going to be, and he believes he can do this, and if you're reasonable, it's obviously true. Trump is knowingly lying when he's making those assertions. Trump is pressuring them to change their vote off of things that he knows are not true. Do so you think that Trump's entire thing about the election fraud, Trump is knowingly lying? He says he, yes, absolutely. he definitely didn't win, but he's like, I know I didn't win, but we're going to go out there, we're going to beautiful mm -hmm. statements about voter fraud, complete falsity. Yep. Uh, we knew we didn't win. 100%. We're going to say we did. Yeah. So that. Okay. Oh, absolutely, of course. Easily. Yeah. But Trump's Trump's defense is, of course, I'm not lying. I was using my investigative power, right? To Well, always... but the problem is, he, no, he absolutely would never say that because every time that Trump used his investigative power, all of the investigations came back saying, no, there was no voter fraud. Barr said, no, there was no voter fraud. The FBI said, no, there was no voter fraud. The DHS said, no, there's no voter fraud. His counsel, his personal attorneys, his White House attorneys, uh, every single person around him said there is no voter fraud. So he wouldn't, he wouldn't talk about his investigative powers. He would have to plead insanity or some other weird thing. But no, every single person he entrusted to research uh, voter fraud came back and said there was no voter fraud. I don't actually think that's true, but that's fine. Uh, because okay, well, the, that's what everybody I mean, has testified to, uh, like, not under everybody oath. Is test no one's testified actually yet at all in this case. Not not in this case, but they've testified to those sets of facts uh, under oath in front of Congress for the January 6th Select Committee. But that's not everybody. That's the people who Congress has asked. It was all the people that I just named. Yeah, the, Jan the, the January 6th uh, Select Committee is a great one. Um, we won't even get into that. Uh, we don't have to. You can think it's about it. You think what you want about it, but these are statements that are made under oath, under penalty of perjury. So you might not like them, or you might think it's biased, but the people that were in that committee and testified, testified I, under oath. And these are yeah, statements I, that are probably heavily being drawn on for the Georgia Rico case and for the uh, Jack Smith indictment. So, I mean, they're yeah. also heavily drawn on the Colorado case. And the dissenting judges uh, laughed at the hearsay, ver the hearsay aspect of that testimony being utilized against Donald Trump. Um, in fact, with one of the Colorado judges saying that uh, I've been uh, a judge for 33 years and what I saw happen was nothing even close to law or anything I've ever seen in my life. In wait, wait, is it hearsay court. if you have um, somebody testifying to what um, a defendant said? Is that hearsay? Trump wasn't a defendant in that case. Then what is the, wait, in what case? Wait, which case are we the, talking The about? Colorado case where he was kept off the ballot. Right, like the January 6th com Select Committee report was uh, contested. It was objected to as hearsay. Um, 
but Trump wasn't a defendant in that case. So uh, oh, in, who would be who would be considered the I guess plaintiff or defendant for the Colorado one? The plaintiff were the voters, and the def- the the respondent in that case was the uh, the Secretary of State. Gotcha. Colorado. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, yes, you can use an opposing party's statement against interest against them. Specifically, a statement against interest uh, can be admitted over a hearsay objection. Um, we're getting into the weeds here, but again, so you have a select committee report with a biased selection of people, and you say everybody has testified that anytime Trump uses investigatory power, they all told him no. Well, no, the people that were asked by the January 6th select committee might have told him no. They might have said, oh, or they might have reported that they told him no. Sure. I'm not saying that they're lying either. I'm just saying that there's probably plenty of other people Trump uh, consulted. He I'm also so curious. No Wait, duty. hold on. I'm so curious. There's no do duty you, to believe them. Do you, do you believe that when Trump goes to defend himself in court, do you think there are going to be credible people that attest that they told Trump there was election fraud? You really think that's going to happen? I'm curious. I have no idea. Okay. Almost certainly I would no. think if you're going to take it to trial, you'd have to. But I also think that Trump likely should have criminal immunity from this. Okay. That's a whole other thing. I, I personally don't believe the president should be above, above the law. Um, it's not. He'd but, be within the law. Well, you're saying that he should be immune from all forms of fraudulent statements or all forms of conspiracy or... No, there's impeachment. What, impe- we're talking about a criminal trial, though. Yeah, I am too. Do you think Trump would fare so, better in an impeachment proceeding? Why would why would an impeachment proceeding be he, more? He, well, he wasn't convicted. He wasn't convicted in crimes for the impeachments, right? He can't be convicted by crimes for an impeachment trial. He'd be subject to removal. The impeachment clause has a possible reading. Hopefully, the Supreme Court will answer this. That suggests that a president can only be criminally charged following a successful impeachment. So if the president murdered somebody, if they didn't impeach him in Congress, he's immune from from state or federal prosecution for the murder? It's an interesting question that I'm not quite sure the answer of because it's never been asked. Well, I guess we're going to find out with these Trump cases then. <laughs> Maybe. So there's there's a couple of possible outcomes that are really interesting. And that this is where all of this kind of comes to a giant issue for Jack Smith and everybody else, right? There's... Three possible outcomes. President has no presidential immunity for criminal acts. The president currently, every president currently suffers uh, or suffers, enjoys civil immunity for any official acts as president, even up to the outer perimeter of feasible presidential acts, right? Anything that could possibly be a presidential act is presumed a presidential act and they're immediately immune from civil suit. Mm -hmm. Any acts that are specifically not presidential acts, but entirely personal acts, they are still subject to civil suit for, right? Like That's a re-election current, campaign? Uh, that is not actually entirely personal. Shockingly enough, I know they're trying to make it out to be so, but throughout all of history, uh, presidents have intermingled re-election campaigns with official acts. Uh, hell, right now, if Joe Biden goes out and gives a speech about the border, right? Mm-hmm. And his, uh, his border policy, is that an official act as president or is that a re-election act? Probably co-mingled or something. Exactly. So how can you possibly uh, disentangle those? It's a what was Donald Trump statement. doing when he was going to Raffensperger claiming voter fraud with no evidence and then begging him to flip the Ooh. vote? In what capacity is president? He has no evidence, him? but he claimed that they had evidence. And I, I listened to that whole call. Did you listen to it or read it? Yep. Hour and 10 minutes. Every word. Yeah. Remember, he when repeated he said, multiple have- claims that had been basically proven incorrect over and over and over again. That's why Raffensperger and the other guy on the call said, we've already looked into this and it's already been proven false. And Trump had actually been told that prior that to this. A lie, call. But- it wasn't a lie. All of that is true. For instance, he brings he did up not for- actually audit the vote. They recounted the vote, which is a completely different thing. That's they- what Trump and then Trump and his attorney said, please give us the data you have because our data says something different. And they refused to hand it over because they don't have the right to that data. And Trump's data didn't say anything That's different. They, they don't have any. Well, then they can ask, but they don't have a right to it. And every claim, okay. all the major claims they made were lies. Giuliani is literally uh, just filed a settlement with that uh, Ruby Freeman saying that, like, yeah, I, I kind of lied, but like that's my First Amendment right. That same video about her triple counting the ballots that I think Trump brought up five times on that phone call has been debunked for three years. Yeah, almost every single claim that he made on that call had was a lie and had already been previously unproven. Now, if you want to say, well, they wanted access that video to the wasn't in- disproven when he made the call. 
Uh, I'm, it might not have been publicly disproven, but his private counsel had told him that it was disproven because the DOJ and the FBI had already looked into these things. Same thing with the Dominion voting machines. Yes, that's why on that call, Raffensperger said, we've looked into this and there is nothing here. All they did was pull the footage. Raffensperger isn't the DOJ or the FBI. No, but um, Barr is the one that told him that this is all bullshit and he looked into it. Uh, Pence was also asked to look into these types of claims and he said, there's nothing here. And Raffensperger on the phone call told him they'd looked into the Ruby Freeman thing and that also wasn't true. What Trump asked Raffensperger and the other guy to do is to give them data to compare to the data that they had that suggested a different result, right? So they didn't, Trump didn't have that data. Trump's, Trump said on the phone, we have data that says that we won. I understand. That's a lie. That's part of what he's being charged with. That was a lie when he said that. That's why it's why fraud. Think that's so you think that Trump had no basis for that statement? None of them. Correct. No yes. Correct. Yes. That's the whole point of these indictments. Yes. I think that's a bold claim. Well, that's what they'll have to prove in court. That's why you I got like they have to prove it with you. You've presumed his guilt. Well, I haven't. I well, no, because these oh, are. Yes you, ha yes, you have. You said it was a lie. I'm sorry. Let me be more clear. <laughs> the indictments allege that it's a lie. It could be oh, the case man. that all of the indictments. You're never indicted. Buddy. It could be the case that it could be the case that all of these indictments are built on bullshit. It could be the case that the people that made statements to the J6 committee um, lied under oath. That's possible. In which case, obviously, none of this would be true. I'm running under the assumption that statements made under oath are generally true, and that the underlying material really? of the indictments are generally true. But if you want to run with the defense that I think actually all of this is a lie and all of this is false and all of this is not true and every single single person involved in this has been lying to the J6 committee and other congressional hearings and to the media and every single person close around Trump, including his re-election committee, White House counsel, uh, Vice President Pence and his entire legal team prior to Sidney Powell. Like, if you want to say all of those people are lying, that's fine. You can run with that. I personally don't think that that's very likely, but it's possible. You don't think that's likely? No, absolutely you don't think not. It's like of course not. Wow. Okay. I'm very, I'm very shocked by that. Destiny, have you ever heard of a prosecuting attorney uh, writing a false indictment and a police officer in the same case making a false uh, claim and having someone convicted for it. Have uh, you ever heard of that happening? I, I can't think of a particular case, but I'm sure it's happened, yeah. You're sure it's happened? Are you sure it's happened uh, this week? Uh, it, based on the fact that there's 330 sure million people in the United States, it wouldn't surprise me if it happens on a weekly basis, yeah. I wouldn't be surprised if it happens on a daily basis. Okay. I wouldn't be surprised if it happens multiple times per day per state. Okay. The question is now. Uh, wait, wait, those... can I ask you a quick question on that? How many times do you think uh, cases involving over 50 sworn witnesses that have all made statements attesting to a certain fact that they've done this privately to multiple investigative bodies uh, and to the media, that they've all attested this fact, and then the all of these people are lying, and that the DA's taken all of these false claims and then made an indictment? How often do you think that happens? You're going farther than I am. You're saying everyone's lying. I'm not saying everyone's lying. Okay, all of them are attesting to the same claims. So you're saying half of them are lying and half of them aren't? They all attest to the same claims because they all have different information. Okay. Right, Bill Barr can testify to what he told Trump. No one else can testify to what Bill Barr told Trump. No, but they're all looking at similar sets of information. There are only 50 states in the United States. Seven of them were the ones that were the most battled over, and tons of people were looking at the exact same sets of data, the exact same videos, relying on the, uh, the DOJ and the underlying intelligence agencies. Like, a lot of people are looking at similar stuff, and they all told Trump it's not true. But you think that there's have a good chance— Have intelligence agencies ever lied what? under oath to Congress? Have, have intelligence agency officials ever lied under oath to Congress? Uh, it's to possible. Anybody? It's possible? Okay, wait, if, Trump, if you don't, okay, if you're smart enough, if you're smart enough not to trust them, why did Donald Trump ask them to investigate if he knew they were going to lie? If he knew they were, he didn't know they were going to lie. Oh, so he asked like, that he asked them to investigate something, but he was only going to accept one answer? What does that sound like to you? He's presumed the answer. He believed, the, you've just proven that he believed legitimately that there was a, that there was voter fraud. I didn't prove that. I proved that he wants that answer. I don't think he believes it. Because even his own he campaign answer, was he telling him. Doesn't believe it. Yeah, of course. What do you mean he wants it? Yes, that's called fraud. Yes, he wants an answer that he knows isn't true. That's fraud. That is fraud. There yes. You go. You're you're working backwards again. You have presumed the fraud and are working back to. You find literally the just said that he presumed he won. I'm asking you, why would he ask people for an answer if he was only going to accept one? You say, well, he presumed he won. What, you, that's working backwards. My working forwards would be you ask somebody no, I, to he investigate. Believed there was voter fraud. He genuinely believes there's voter fraud. If he believes it and you ask your investigative bodies to look into it and they come back and they say no, at what point should you change your belief? I don't know. What point would you change your belief if you genuinely believe it? Well, what it level of evidence could be presented to you by someone mm -hmm. in the face of your 
dogmatic belief to be true? What what would someone have to do to change your well, mind? Well, I would try not to have a dogmatic belief about a fact of the matter because that would make you delusional. Well, we're going to have to disagree on this case here, but that's fine. Okay, that, if Trump <laughs> wants to plead insanity or he wants to be delusional, I mean, I guess he can Why do is it that. insanity to disbelieve people who you don't think have done an adequate job? Who, if the DOJ, the FBI, every state body that's looked into this, if every independent investigation, if every single person looked into this did an inadequate job, at what point are you delusional? What level of power does it take to defraud the entire country on an election for the president of the United States? What type of power does it take? Yeah, how much power does it take? What do you, what do you have to do? How deep do you have to go? Uh, how strong well, do you have apparently to go? pretty deep because Trump went pretty deep and it didn't work, so... Oh, Trump, Trump attempted to defraud the country. Yep. So this is interesting because there is no, again, we get to this problem where there's no ultimate harm or fraud. Trump didn't delay the exchange wait, of Wait, why do you, hold on, wait, 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 stop, hold on. I don't know why you keep saying this, okay? I just, I just want you to tell me this, and if this is fine, we can skip this whole part of the conversation, okay? You keep making this argument that if the fraud didn't work, it wasn't attempted fraud. Do no, you believe you're that? you're presuming it's fraud. Because if Trump overturned the election the here here's a question didn't work then it isn't fraud you've just called it fraud you've defined it as fraud and you've said well it didn't work so therefore it's not fraud it must be something else no that's not the case okay wait here's a question let's say that he flips the election results but there wasn't actually uh there wasn't actually any rigged votes would that be fraud it's a really good question isn't it can trump do anything that's fraudulent uh, regarding the election Let, let's get something out let's let, i think we need to go back to one specific thing that I, I need to make sure you understand I agree on this premise. Okay. Joe Biden is the duly elected, constitutionally approved president of the United States. Mm -hmm. He is. Yes. Had Trump been successful and mm -hmm. gotten all of those alternate slates of electors done, and those states flipped and been inaugurated on January 20th, uh -huh. Trump would be the duly elected president of the United States, according to the Constitution. Yes. Once that constitutional process closes at inauguration, that president is the constitutionally approved, duly elected president of the United States. Yes. All right. So we have to go from that premise because all of this boils down to trying to convince the people involved in making the decision about who gets to be president to make the decision in one's favor or not. And every single step of the way, Trump asks people to act in his favor based on his claim of voter fraud. He gives them the opportunity to follow the constitutional process and never ever does he step outside of it. Not once. That's he not doesn't true, employ though. executive authority. Wait. He doesn't employ military power. Okay. He doesn't uh, do he, anything to coerce or force anyone to he make He literally decision. does. What? The... Can I ask you first for a concept? What is what is fruit of the poisonous tree mean? Fruit of the poisonous tree is a Fourth Amendment doctrine mm -hmm. involving uh, the illegal obtaining of evidence leading to further evidence down the road. And it just goes to the lack of admissibility of ev evidence obtained from a falsely uh, acquired piece of evidence. Okay. In violation of the Constitution. If, 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 a, if a jury convicts a man of murder, right, he is guilty of the crime of murder. And he'll go to jail for it, right? If the, if, if the jury, 12 people, convict him, the court process, we agree that he's convicted of murder, he would go to jail for murder, right? Sure. Okay. If, uh, if, um, if the man is uh, uh, subpoenaed, or not subpoenaed, it'd be what, a warrant for his arrest because uh, police officers go to a judge, they present evidence, and they say he's a suspect of the crime for the murder, um, and the judge signs off on the warrant, they have a right to go and arrest that man and, and, and put him in jail until they can go to court, right? Yeah. Okay. If in the very beginning of this investigation, the police officers unlawfully break into his house in order to secure evidence to get the initial sign off for the investigation or the warrant for his arrest. Mm -hmm. At that point, every other thing down the road from that becomes invalidated. Yes. No, uh, but it should. But no, there's there's this whole it's law, man, it's complicated. Uh, Wait, so you're telling me that about, you can't get convictions thrown out because of, like, bad evidentiary reasons? That's not possible? That's never happened in the history no, of the US? No, 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 no. See, you're, you're doing this. Uh, the law is very gray, right? Okay. And there's so many different circumstances. I'm about to explain yeah, how it. it can work. And I hate this. I hate this. I want what you said to be true, 
Okay? okay. That's what I want. I'm, I'm a purist on the Fourth Amendment, like, so far. Uh, but here's the issue. If police do illegally obtain evidence that leads to other evidence, it should be excluded unless there is a good faith exception that other legitimate investigative efforts could have produced the same results. And that's a stupid rule, but it exists. So there is a feasible possibility that other evidence could still be admissible, even though it was obtained due to the result of an illegal move, if there was another possible alternative that reasonable investigative efforts would have uncovered. And I hate fucking saying it because sure. it shouldn't be true. And I understand that. I understand the argument probably for that, that if they were to break into somebody's house and saw that, oh, uh, he's actually got a subscription to, you know, Bowlers Anonymous, and they decide to investigate that website and they find that there he admitted to killing his wife and like, well, your honor, yeah, we should have broken into the house, but we could have feasibly come across this website and investigated. You're saying that this might be an exception where they, they're like, okay, sure, even though the original evidence was ill begotten like they could have discovered this and we're going to let everything else stand is essentially what you're saying yeah right? let's say let's say other uh other officers were coming at it from a different way sure, yeah okay sure or collateral it's, investing or, or yeah, yeah i understand sure but in the case where like you break into his house illegally and you find the glove and the knife and all of this you theoretically could get this entire conviction overturned because all of, of your course. key yeah okay yeah that's all I'm arguing for the Trump stuff. That if okay. he would have gotten elected, it would have, or no, I'm sorry, if he would have been constitutionally certified by Pence, he would have been the president. If he would, if Pence would have thrown out the electorate slates, then they would have chosen different electorate slates. That's fine. But the beginning of this process was fraud. That's where the injury comes from. Not because they followed the constitution later on down the line. The injury comes from them committing fraud at the beginning to taint the rest of the process. Not really, because the fraud, <sighs> okay. You're saying you're saying that it's not fraudulent because he thinks the election was really stolen, so he can commit fraud in all these different places as long as he effects the I'm right not outcome. He can commit fraud. That's that's the thing. The, okay, here's here's there's this problem with again all of this being a constitutional question involving plenary unquestionable authority, and and I know you want to breeze by that because it makes this really. And messy and you want like a nice easy answer and i'm not here like i'm okay I, with I, the plenary authority you just keep bringing up like you're not i am because if you would say so. if you would have said if you would have said listen like let's say this happens okay there are so many different ways that i would agree with you if georgia says you know what maybe there was fraud we're gonna okay both slates of electors and send them down i wouldn't like it but it's like okay i understand it that's the process at least right if that would have happened with their plenary authority that's fine now i don't know all the legal terms i don't know you tell me does plenary authority involve a delorean and time travel because if not then they committed fraud when they said we were duly elected and your rationale of well in the future they might have said it was okay doesn't undo the fraudulent claim no because the issue is not needing time travel because if you have plenary authority to choose the slate of electors by the manner in which you choose, mm -hmm. then you can simply choose the other electors. And it doesn't matter what they wrote on the paper. Yeah, but the, the we're not talking about the choosers. We're talking about the people that lied and said they were choosed. And even and listen, even if I grant you every even if even if I grant you statement to sure. be an elector, even if, let's say that I grant you all of this. OK, let's say that I grant every single thing at the end. You have to go. Well, though, I guess since they didn't choose them, it was fraud. No, I don't think it's fraud because they didn't choose them because those statements are irrelevant to the choosing of electors. That's what you're missing. Those statements do not prevent or empower the legislature from choosing that slate of electors even later than they were submitted because no one can question the legislature's choice and this is weird because i and i talked about this a ton during all of the lawsuits immediately following the the vote because they're like well they can simply unchoose the slates of electors that were sent they could decertify their election results and you go well how do you do that what's the mechanism that that works on how does how does a state decertify its electors and everybody's convinced they could and i'm questioning i'm like how do you do that well the ultimate answer is you just do it because the state has plenary authority specifically the state legislature has plenary authority which means the judiciary of the state the executive of the state the judiciary legislature and executive of the uh, of the federal government 
cannot question the way the state legislature chooses elections. It's constitutionally mandated that they have the power to do it, which means if they change their mind, they just do. And that's why it's critical to have these time limited processes in the choosing of the next president, because if they decertified their election now, what the hell do we do, right? Like, that's a mess. Now we have this idea that, oh, well, uh, one state has decided that the president's not legitimate, blah, 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 big mess. You can't do it. You have to go through impeachment to, to try and get there. But as long as you are in the window of time between vote, uh, submitting of a slate of electors, the reading of the electors, ultimately the resolving of the electors, naming the president, and then ultimately inauguration at the end, as long as you're within there and there you have some sort of time for any of those processes to take place, theoretically, and we don't know if there would be some limit on this because it's never been asked, a state can withdraw its selection of the electors, certify any electors that it wants by its own choosing, that's plenary authority, and that that elector slate would be legitimate period because no one can question it. No one, not even the own state judiciary can question it technically. Now I know obviously the Supreme Court could come in and say that's not how it works. It's not actually a plenary authority, but that's how plenary authority works in all circumstances. So if there is a mechanism by which the state can legally choose the other slate of electors and those fraudulent clauses have no operative power to bind the state legislature to that decision, then it's not a fraud because they can't be bound by it. They can't be induced into it. And the statements are just fluff because the state can just say, we want these guys. We don't care what that paper says. We decided what would be on the paper and we're deciding that it doesn't matter right now. And you can't fucking ask us a question about it because that's our decision. That's okay. why it's not so, fraud. I understand. You Do keep you? justifying, well, yes. You keep trying to tell me about person A's power. Where person A is a state legislature that you say has plenary power to decide the legislature. I'm never talking about them. None of this conversation has you been about them. To. No, you don't. What we're talking about is group B claiming person A empowered them to do something and you keep arguing person a could they could in the future they've got unlimited power too they could do all of this and i'm saying i agree i don't know why you keep repeating those points i agree with all that person b said that they had when they hadn't that's the fraud and then you keep and then you snuck in at the end here doesn't that like matter that they said that they had it doesn't matter if it doesn't matter fraud is not not fraud because you don't have okay hold on if you would just say this one thing then we can just move on to this point then too just tell me this if you attempted fraud doesn't count if there's no plausible way for your scheme to work can you just say that and then we can just move on because that's the argument you're making you're saying as long as like it's not reasonable that your attempted fraud would work well then it's never attempted fraud just say that and then we move on to the next thing because that's what you keep saying you keep saying because, because it wouldn't you can't, you can't say that because it isn't true then why do you keep attesting to that <laughs> Okay, here's a question. Because when they, no, when they, the when the electors principle doesn't apply in this case because those two statements aren't a fraud. They can't induce the outcome. It's not possible. So but cannot induce the outcome means that it's not fraud. It's not attempted fraud. If you can't induce induce the outcome. Yes, the the lie has to be material to the inducement of gaining a benefit or causing harm, which is what I said at the beginning, man. Okay. All right. How is that hard? The lie, the, the fraud yep. is not the overall thing. The fraud is the lie, the falsehood that you tell to induce a benefit or mm -hmm. induce a detriment. Okay. That's what a fraud is. Gotcha. So if those two lies can't mm -hmm. induce it, then they don't matter. Okay. So if I walk into a bank with $10,000 of $100 bills that are clearly fraudulent and they take the marker and they're like, this is not good. I don't get charged with anything for attempted fraud or whatever. Uh, the Secret Service argument, but no attempted fraud because my bills would have never gotten cash to the bank. That's way different. Well, that's what you're the saying. You're saying that the electorate no. slate, when they said, we are the duly elected electors, Fire and it's elected. not true, they, you, because okay. you're defending false out. statements by using no. the future time travel principle that they could go back no, in time. Your analogy, dude, your analogy is shit. And here's why your analogy is shit. Your analogy is shit because the lie is that the representation is that this bill is true. That this bill is true. Yes, like we are the certified slate of electors. No. Yes. No. no, because... No, because... Are they the certified slate of electors? Definitely. Were they? The, wait, wait. Tell me. Were they? Definitely. Were they, they? Were they the duly elected slate of electors? They can't defraud anyone 
with those statements. Okay, let's get because, we'll get to there. But can you tell me, were they the duly slated? No, slated, they weren't, and they said they were right. But even though they lied it there, matter. Okay, that's fine. So they lied there. That's fine. So they lied there. Yeah. Okay. Now going forward, okay, if they said that they were the duly elected slate of electors, all right, what was the goal of that? To become the duly slate of ele duly elected slate of electors by choice of the state legislature. Uh, by choice of the state legislature, then why didn't they go to the state legislature? Because them transmitting that to Congress says the state legislature. They did go to the state legislatures. They uh, they were then they were locked out. They said go away. You're not welcome here. Trump also went to the state legislatures and sent Giuliani, but they did not make the decision at that point. What was then going to happen was the constitutional process of reading the slate of electors. Then an objection was going to be levied in various states. Some actually were. Then after the events of January 6th, some that were planned were not levied in those states like Wisconsin, for example. And at that time, Mike Pence would hopefully, according to their scheme, look at this and go, actually, we're going to send this back to the state for investigative purposes, which has actual historical precedent no, of a vice president. This does stuff. not have historical precedent. That is absolutely oh not true. There was an there was an inauguration delayed until like March or May to investigate possible voter fraud back in the late 1800s or early 1900s. This that was happened. done with a vice president unilaterally rejecting a state's electorate slate based on the sitting president falsely submitting them? I'm curious. What is the example? Here you go. I've heard it's of South Carolina community. and I've heard of Hawaii, but neither of those fit the bill here. It's not even close. You, you, you went straight to the presumption of the fraudulent criminal act. And if, if you're presuming a criminal act, you're already going to have a problem having this debate. But here's the thing. Again, your analogy was if I walk in with a hundred dollar bill that's false, I hand it to them. Uh -huh. Well, it's not a fraud because they weren't going to accept it. Except that is the lie. The lie is that this hundred dollar bill is real. You can agree with me on that, right? Correct. That is the lie. Okay. Why now, is that not analogous so to the lie of we are the certified duly elected people? Because no one needs those two state that statement to be real to make the choice. Wait, but wait. How can Pence see a, a slate of electors if they don't say that they're the duly certified slate of electors? Pence has to reject the original slate. Because there are then, two. Because there are two now. One that is falsely attested to being... Actually, actually, no. Pence has to reject the original based on an objection raised by a House member during the counting. The, wait, wait, the House member raising an objection doesn't need a false slate of electors to raise said election, uh, uh, raise no, but you said might objection. need an alternate slate of electors to be chosen and ready to go so the state can certify it to be within the constitutional timeline. Well, if that's the case, then don't you think we should allow the state to do that and not a presidential candidate? That would be... Wouldn't that be happen. ideal? Because that's like the process that you're supposed to follow. <laughs> when Dude, you say, it's like if you find mold on your sandwich and there's another sandwich there, it's like, oh, I'll just pick this one then. I, I don't think the analogy works because there's not a state legislative really process does. by which I create my sandwich, <laughs> right? No, there's there's no state process that can bind the state legislature. That's what I'm trying to tell this plenary authority. And wait, wait, wait. There's not a process by which the state. So if I go to Georgia and I talk to anybody in the state legislature, I can say any single citizen right now can declare themselves to be a valid elector. Or would the state say, no, we've got the plenary thing that Nick has brought up 50 million times, but we didn't use it with them and we're not going to use it with you, which would make you saying that they, we had fraud. No. It's, uh, okay. It's not fraud because they're presuming that they will be selected by the state at the original election. How am I working backwards when you're saying it's not fraud because they think in the future that this thing will happen, which by the way, didn't happen. And if it doesn't happen, there's no harm. There's not even an ability to cause harm. But they tried to. They can't. Does that make How it not fraud? Are we back at that argument because of what they did ended up not working or it couldn't have worked for some it, reason that is not like, is it not feasible that Pence could have, if Pence was like Trump, could Pence have said, you know what? We're going to toss these out. We're going to accept the other slate. And that the people in Congress uh, that were certifying those votes uh, says like, okay, yeah, we are going to accept it. That's not possible. There was no possibility of that happening. I think, wait, I'm sorry. Restate that. Could Pence have not just accepted the false slate of electors or just counted them? Maybe. That's actually an open question. We don't know. Well, if he would have done that, would that not have been fraudulent? It's a good question, isn't it? Okay, backing up. Let's back up from the legal question. Do you see from how like a, I don't want to invoke the dreaded common sense words. Can you not see from a moral sense that that probably would be not good? That like Pence accepting a slate of electors that is in contrast to your 
state legislature certifying and sending in their electoral vote, that that's like an immoral thing, that we probably shouldn't have the vice president or people rejecting electoral college votes. It's probably a bad thing. Probably. Okay. It's probably a bad thing, right? It's probably really bad if the president himself is the one asking that to happen so that he can stay in power in opposition to the American vote Wait, for president, we, right? Isn't that kind of a bad thing? Are we talking about morality or legality? We're talking about morality. That's why I'm saying a bad thing and not an illegal thing. It's probably oh, a bad good. thing. If we're going to talk about morality and what goes on, I have, I have all sorts of bad things that all these people do. I'm sure I know the whataboutisms are strong, but I'm just asking for Donald Trump. Wouldn't we say it's probably a bad thing if the president of the United States, okay, is pressuring states to change their electoral college vote so that he gets to stay president? Isn't that a bad thing? Not following any process or procedure at the foundational it level is, of like... It is a process or procedure. Well, after the lie it is, yeah. But... Only if you presume it's a lie. Like, if he genuinely believes that there's elector fraud, election fraud, he, he, he can justify to do anything he wants if he genuinely believes if it. He, if it. If it is limited to advocating for them to take up the quote unquote correct position based on his belief, yes, because they don't have to. Well, but he wasn't just advocating it. He was helping, but you're going to use the plenary thing again. Okay, well, listen, I, we're bedrock at, <laughs> at this How's it not advocacy? Please choose this alternate slate of electors that we've provided conveniently for you because we know Trump the cannot provide occurred. alternate slates of electors. That's not his Why power not? because he's not uh, he's not part of the state assembly of Georgia, Wisconsin, of any of the states that were involved or whatever, of Arizona, of any of these states. That's why, why not? So you've you've created a legal requirement for someone to be involved to create a slate of electors that could be chosen by the Georgia legislature, which can choose literally anyone they want. But they didn't choose them. But they can. But they didn't. That's why it's but fraud. You created a requirement. You you created. I didn't create the requirement. That's the requirement of Georgia. They have a requirement. Wait, you think? Do you think for Georgia they just like do a lottery or a, like you don't think they have a process by which they choose electors? Your words, where Trump is not part of the Georgia Assembly, yes. therefore he can't advocate for them to choose a different slate of no, electors. That's you're, no, 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 whoa, you just added a whole new argument. Trump can advocate for them to choose new electors. What he did. He didn't. He chose new electors and had them lie and send in their vote. That's those are, You understand those are two totally different things, right? Why? Because in one, you're advocating for party A to use their plenary power. And in two, mm -hmm. you're taking group B and you're trying to circumvent party A. The circumvention nope. of party A's plenary power. Party A still has to be involved. They still have to choose that slate of electors. But they didn't. Right, but they would have to for them to work. Then maybe Trump should have advocated for them to choose that. He did. <laughs> okay. That's the whole thing. He's just sitting there sending people to all these states saying, you had fraud. We see it. Here's our data. Uh, we, we need you to look into this. We want you to decertify your election results, and we want you to choose the correct slate of electors. Whoa. Here's the slate of electors. S some of those statements are okay. Some of those statements are wildly not okay. Telling somebody, look into voter fraud is fine. He asked them that, and they said, okay. we didn't see anything. Uh, telling them to flip their vote, probably not fine. He asked them that, and they said well, no to that as wait. well. Who said we didn't see anything? Secretary of State, right? Yeah. Raffensperger. Yes. And election officials, right? Yes. Was it the state legislature who says we looked into it and didn't see anything? Uh, I don't Not know. Not in Arizona, state... right? Because in Arizona, they actually filed suit. Who did? Uh, the, the state legislature. Actually, the, the Speaker of the House, right? What's the, the status? Republican... What's, what is the suit alleging? When, and what is the remedy they're seeking? Voter fraud in Maricopa County. Yeah, they what is the... looking for? Overturn. Of course, they they got shot down. Oh, without, they got shot down. Without so. actually, without actually having the uh, the evidence weighed. But that's wait fun. wait without having the evidence weighed, meaning they didn't reach discovery, or they failed on evidentiary grounds and it was tossed, or because the remedy they were seeking was insane, like decertifying the entire election when they couldn't even why show. Is that why why is it an insane remedy if you have an issue with some number of votes in the county that wouldn't be outcome determinative to seek a remedy to toss out the entire state's vote? Why is that insane? Well, wait, wait, what is the difference? It was wait, wait, wait. Determinative. Was? Okay. Where, where is that? And did they show any evidence of that? Well, if you don't get to actually present evidence, then you don't get to show evidence. But wait, wait what is the? How do you go to a judge? Well, okay, wait. Talk me through this because I don't know anything. I'm not a judge at all. Or I'm not a lawyer at all. How do you go to a judge and file a case? What do you have to do in the beginning? Yeah, tell me. Tell me. What do you have to do in the beginning parts? What do you have to show the judge for him to get to accept your case? Pleading standards are different in every state. Some have notice pleading requirements, which just says you have to provide notice to the other party of roughly what they need to defend against. In others, you need to provide a little bit more than notice pleading. You have to have uh, you have to ba have basically the federal standard, which would be um, you have to have 
uh, statements of fact that are non-conclusory, not mm -hmm. necessarily true, just mm -hmm. statements of fact that are non-conclusory that support every element of the claim that you're trying to make, where if give if taken as true and uncontested would lead to a claim Con that would provide would relief conviction. from the Correct, court. yes. So, okay, I agree with you. So what were the statements of fact that were made in that particular suit? I don't remember. There were a lot of different suits and this was what? Well, but you brought up now? one in particular and you said it was yeah. tossed out for bullshit reasons. My understanding well, is almost every single one that got tossed out for bullshit reasons because of the statements of fact, none of these things even rose to the level of being remotely close to the remedies that they were seeking, which was sometimes to throw out the entire election of the state or to do an entire revote. There are a couple, there are a couple very good questions asked in a couple of the lawsuits and the majority of them were bad. Okay. But you don't get to say all of them were bad because the majority of them were bad, which you've done basically every because time. Because I'm sorry, about I haven't looked at every single court case, but every single and one I that's been brought up to me, to. every single one that's been brought up to me that I do look at ends up being total horseshit. So I'm curious if this was just one of the ones out of the 120 others that we looked at. Maybe this was one of the ones that was really good. So I'm just curious if maybe this was a we really went, good complaint. We went farther than most, but... Uh, I wait, wait, know. you said it went remember. farther than most? I thought you said it didn't even make it to court. I thought you said it got tossed out because There's of the... a whole lot of steps that occur, but... Uh, and then there were some appeals that went back and forth. There was data that was supposed to be disclosed that wasn't disclosed. Uh, the Democrat Election Committee of Maricopa County basically defied the court order. It didn't turn over stuff. And so then there was more and more and more. And it, it went through a lot of steps. Ultimately, I do think it was dismissed uh, prior to pre-trial. Um, it's you're trying to break these cases down into these small component parts or these easy pithy ways to dismiss them the, the reason i asked you earlier by what mechanism would you challenge an election in any case is because no one actually knows no one could tell you how to bring a competent case to challenge voter fraud in the United States in 2020. Not I disagree. That's absolutely not true. No one can do it. No, you can't show any evidence of, hey, uh, like here are some statements of fact that if true would amount to the crimes that we're attesting. Uh, and then we, this is the remedy that we're seeking or how we want the courts to address it. That's not possible. How are so many cases no brought? No one knows how to do it. No one knew how to do it. The, the legitimate cases that were brought, uh, Texas v. Georgia, great questions, great case. Supreme Court has original jurisdiction and just decided it didn't. Phenomenal. Then you've got uh, Pennsylvania. Wait, 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 hold on. I'm sorry, just to be clear, I'm sorry. The Supreme Court has original dur jurisdiction to decide how states run their elections? Or decide a dispute between states. What is the, but there is no dispute between the states. Texas has no, wait, wait, hold, I want you to say that. I'm sorry. Do you believe that some states should be able to dictate to other states how they run their elections? I just want to hear you say that if you believe that to be the case. You think that Texas should be able to tell Georgia how to run their election? That's not what Texas was trying to do. What were they trying to do? Texas was alleging that Georgia's, uh, Georgia's, I think it was the refusal to investigate the fraud or it was uh, Georgia's um voter fraud itself or the 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 electors that were chosen illegitimately negatively impacted texas uh texas citizens or texas electors ability to um to have their votes matter like they're disenfranchising the electors does, does now, texas not, voters have the right that the per person that they vote for becomes president that's not the question i just don't understand how let's say california decides to make it so that illegal immigrants can vote in their election would california be really interesting would Cali if california only picked electors based on illegal immigrants sure. would california have standing to sue texas because texas isn't counting the the votes of their illegal citizens it's a different question why, wait, why is that a different question? Maybe California feels like their illegal immigrants' votes are being disenfranchised and, and because other illegal immigrants no, in Texas aren't, aren't allowed to vote. I thought they had, I, what happened to the plenary authority argument that these states have plenary authority to determine how they want to run their elections and pick their electors? Why would Texas have more of a, then why would Texas have a say over that? What if Georgia just says, yeah, there was voter fraud, we love it. We're going to pick our people anyway, screw you. Why would Texas have any standing there whatsoever? Well, they have standing, standing. First of all, standing requirements are bullshit. Uh, what do in you mean, general, they're- why? Standing is a fiction created by the courts to reduce the amount of lawsuits that they have to hear. There's a whole bunch of problems with the standing. Uh, like if if the United States uh, creates an unconstitutional tax law, for example, yeah. right? Uh, and it affects everybody the same. You have no standing as a voter or as a taxpayer to, to sue because it affects everybody the same. Did you realize that? 
If it affects so everybody the same, that my guess would be you'd yes. have to challenge it, what, on like constitutional grounds? You can't. You don't have standing to bring the claim in the first place because you're you're a taxpayer. So you're not particularly injured since all taxpayers are presumably under the same. How, law, how, were, how were cases brought against challenging the constitutionality of the uh, Affordable Care Act? Because people were particularly injured, they claimed, uh, by being forced to uh, purchase or make a purchasing decision, et cetera, et cetera. There, How can some people say they're particularly they injured by uh, undue tax burdens? Well, they, they actually lost on the Affordable Care Act on the tax and spend power. Yeah, but they didn't lose because they couldn't prove standing. You're saying that you wouldn't have standing if every person is affected in the U.S.? You're telling me that there's, that, that there's no You're, way... Yeah, you sorry. have to have a particularized injury. I'm, I'm telling you what the standing requirement is. You have to have a particularized injury. So if everybody's equally affected, this is part of the problem of the federal election lawsuits that were brought was they're dismissed on standing grounds. They're like, well, you don't have standing as a voter to challenge your own state's election results. And you're like, well, but my vote wasn't counted because there was fraud. And they said, sorry, you're not particularly injured because the fraud affected everybody in your state equally. That was actually Georgia, the Lynn Wood case. And I don't think that was a good case. I think Lynn Wood's a a quack but it was rejected on standing grounds and we never got to whether or not the merits of the case mattered and this is why it's frustrating to talk to people who are just like well they were all thrown out well a judge didn't like them well the, 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 they didn't present evidence they didn't do this the standing and latches dismissals of these cases weren't particularly helpful the pennsylvania case was really amazing because pennsylvania literally subverted their own constitutional requirement on absentee ballot uh the absentee ballot law that was passed as a constitutional measure but had not fully been approved by a second vote according to their constitution which would make it the uh, you know which would make it part of their constitution it was a requirement to amend the pennsylvania constitution it went up to the pennsylvania supreme court who just basically said well we don't care that we subverted our own constitution to pass a measure that would impact a federal election and then the uh, justices decided latches uh, we're not going to go ahead and hear this pennsylvania case because it's it's too late and it's still during the pendency of the election um but this is a really good question can a state subvert its own constitution just to be well, wait, before we, so then just to be clear, you, you think that anybody should be able to bring suit to anybody else in the, in the United States at any point in time? Any party should be able to bring suit because you think all standing is bullshit? Is that, is that what I got from that? You, you understand that standing isn't a requirement in state court. What do you mean by isn't a requirement in state court? Standing is a federal requirement. And so, so if, if I don't have to prove that I'm an injured party in a state thing, any two people can see you have to show that you're an injured party. Sure. If there's no injury, you can have it dismissed. Wait, I'm sorry. Okay. I might, I truly, I might just understand. Standing I thought that proving, are, I thought that proving you're an injured party is part of proving that you have standing to bring a case to the court. Is that not proving you're an injured party is required? Yes. Okay. Proving you have a particularized injury for federal lawsuits is a different and heightened well, you, form. Sure, but I'm, you said state lawsuits. You said in state lawsuits, you don't have to prove state standing, so anybody can file any case on behalf of any person or file a case against any person at any point in time? allege injury in state lawsuits, you don't have to have a particularized injury that you would have to have in the federal lawsuits. Federal standing requirements only exist in federal law. So when I say standing is bullshit, you're like, you think anybody can sue anybody? Well, that exists. It exists in state law right now in every state. Okay, sure. No standing requirement. So if you're saying that if your issues with the federalized rules, then none of these election suits, or only a few of them, had to do with federal rules, right? Weren't these state election suits? You were bring, they were bringing them into their state? giant mix of both, but... I thought the vast majority, like 95% were state lawsuits. It was citizens trying to sue their county boards or their election boards. Like I thought like the vast majority of them, there aren't that many federal ones. I thought there's a handful of federal ones. Am I wrong on that? Like te like some states trying to sue others. I know the Texas It doesn't ones. matter how many bad ones were dismissed because they were ludicrous. I mean, it kind of does. No, it doesn't. It kind of does. Okay, if I bring three good lawsuits and you bring 500 bad ones going for the same sort of end game, do your 500 bad ones have any impact on my three? Uh, if they were brought by the same person, potentially. They're not, though. You just said they were brought by individual citizens to their own states, so they're not brought by the sure, same Sure, I'm focusing on the 62 that Trump's campaign brought. Um, because that's who's being charged with uh, obstruction and the conspiracy, not all of the other individual citizens that brought their court cases. Uh, so for but those, you're just talking about the individual citizens, sure. for so those individuals, no, they can. Okay, good one. 
Um, for all You've the individual been citizens. Them up the whole time. No, <laughs> hold on. You're the one that's been jumping around like crazy on all of these about the federalized things versus the state things versus the blah 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 blah. Okay, you've been jumping around I'm all of these. I have to explain various concepts of law. It's complicated and irritating. You're not a lawyer. Your audience isn't lawyers. So I'm not trying to be condescending, but but this shit's really sure. fucking complicated. I understand man. what you're saying, but you have to understand that even as a lawyer, you're giving novel answers to these things that I don't think the vast majority of people would agree with. I don't think the vast majority of lawyers would say there that's fine. Answers. But I'm just saying that like this is not like you're opinions of Nick Riccato the lawyer, these are your personal opinions of like Nick Riccato, like the libertarian, right? That like no. standing is bullshit or that- um, Well, yeah, my standing is bullshit is, is, but that's legally inoperative, but then you followed up with it, so I'm gonna answer you. Sure. Not dick. Okay, sure, I know, but I'm just saying that like, or the idea that like attempted fraud is not illegal as long as the fraud doesn't have like a reasonable way of, of, of like taking fruition or whatever. Like these are unique opinions to you, not like as no. a lawyer, I understand these things. No, as a lawyer, if you're defending a an alleged fraud, and they go, "Here's the lie," and you go, "But that lie can't induce a fraud." Yes, uh, that's a defense. But okay, I'm 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 doing my best to figure out what's going on because I'm not a lawyer, okay? But here's what it sounds like you're trying to sell me, and here's what it sounds like the actual rule is. And maybe I'm wrong. Tell me, okay? When you say yes, that you. fraud can't induce what's happening, it sounds like you're trying to I sell that lie can't that lie can't in, that lie can't induce fraud. It sounds like what you're trying to sell me is if the lie is such that it can't ever, uh, that the, the fraud can't come to fruition, then it can't be a lie. Or, or I'm sorry, that the lie can't be a fraud. You're saying that if somebody tells a lie and it can't turn into a, a, an illegal act or whatever, that that lie is like somehow not fraud. Yes, if the lie yes. cannot turn into an illegal act, it cannot be a fraud. Correct. Correct. That's what you're saying. I'm I don't think that's tall. the rule. I don't think that's the rule. I'm eight feet tall with my dick dragging I understand. behind me. Destiny. I don't think that's the rule. What it sounds that to is me, of course, the okay. Rule. And I might be wrong. And you know, I want other people to come in. Definitely are. Yeah, okay. Here's what it sounds like the rule actually is. It sounds like what the rule actually is is if you're telling a lie that that isn't ever reasonably leading a person to commit like a fraudulent activity or whatever, then that particular lie can never amount to fraud. For instance, if I tell somebody, can you please go to the bank and get me $5,000? If that person goes to the bank and robs it, and then they come back and they say, here's your $5,000, and, and somebody tries to take me to court for that, I can say, hold on, me asking them to go to the bank, that doesn't amount to, to me, uh, uh, to any sort of uh, like illegal claim or whatever bullshit here, because I'm not like, I, that can't induce the fraudulent activity of them uh, robbing the bank, or it wouldn't be robbing the bank, or sub submitting a fake check or anything like that, right? My lie can't reasonably lead to them submitting a fake check. We'll say they did with a Where fake check. Where did you right? lie? You sent them to the bank to get money. That wasn't a lie. Sure. <sighs> I can't think so of a one-to-one analogy, analogy but the, you're, you're, sure, the analogy is messy. I've got one. Go, yeah, go I've ahead. Say it. Yeah, you. go ahead. This, this happened. This yeah. happened in Minnesota. Go ahead. Okay? Uh, there's a CEO of a company. Uh, it was a medical device company. They make stints, right? And um, each stint, uh, decide, depending on how long and how the, the gauge of the stint has to be individually approved. Well, it doesn't have to. Gets individually approved by the FDA uh, for advertisement for the type of treatment that it's used for, right? Okay. Uh, okay, accept that premise because um, the right was more this is what happens. Sure. A stint gets okay, so submitted to the FDA by a company and the stint is approved by the FDA for and, a medical treatment. And yeah, then the FDA will say you can advertise this stint for this thing, this thing, you know, mm -hmm. these particular treatments. Um, so this medical device company, they make these stints uh, and one sales team in Colorado consisting of one sales manager and three salespersons who they market directly to doctors who would uh, doctors and purchasing uh, managers at hospitals who would buy these stints, right? Uh -huh. They, uh, the manager creates a sales meeting document that says um, this stint is FDA approved for uh, treatment of this coronary condition. And he gives those to his three salespeople. And they have the sales meeting, rah, rah, fest, and then they go out and sell. There's no evidence that that document has ever been to a doctor at all. That document, however, finds its way in the hands of a federal prosecutor. Federal prosecutor prosecutes the CEO of this company for making a false statement of advertising, suggesting that this uh, stint is approved to treat a certain medical condition. Okay, that it wasn't that it was approved by the FDA too, or not approved by the FDA too. That it was, yeah, that it was approved to treat a, a certain medical, or that it was FDA approved. Mm -hmm. That it was FDA approved. Okay, that was the, the statement was that it was FDA approved. And then it was uh, marketed in this document to treat a list of conditions. Now they had not received particular approval on one of the conditions that's in the document, but it was an FDA approved stint, just not on that particular uh, thing. Okay. Okay. So uh, he's charged with this crime. 
Uh, he's federally indicted. 18 months of federal indictment. It cost $20 million for the defense because there were, I think, 40 different states in which this place operated where they had to do depositions. It's a long trial. Big mess. Um, when it comes down to it, uh, turns out the prosecution makes their case. They allege uh, they, they made this false statement about FDA approval uh, for treatment. So, so it is a lie, right? It's not true. It's not approved for that treatment, but it is FDA approved, but not for that particular thing. So they, they definitely like this sales manager lied on behalf of the company. That lie occurs. Okay. Okay. The problem is it's not illegal to tell that lie. It's not illegal to say the lie that the FDA approved this treatment and then in a separate statement on the same paper say this treatment treats this thing. Yep. It's not illegal. It is a recommendation of the FDA that they obtain specific approval for the specific treatments, but otherwise it's an off-label treatment. We, you, you see off-label treatments in prescription drugs all the time, right? Doctors are able to use their expertise to determine that a particular drug might be beneficial to someone even if it's not an FDA-approved treatment. Like, you know about that, right? Like, I think everybody knows that there's off-label treatments for pharmaceuticals. Right. I, I'm aware of that. I don't know if you're allowed to say a drug is FDA approved and then advertise it for an off-label thing. You're not advertising it technically for the off-label thing. Like if I were to go to somebody, if I were to go to somebody with some Adderall and say, hey, Adderall, this is FDA approved. Take it and it'll help you lose weight. Isn't that a fraudulent yeah, statement? Well, you didn't say it was FDA approved for losing weight, did you? Now, here's, the, here's the crazy thing. Okay. How did the, the judge the rule on this? Is, yeah. Or how did the jury uh, oh, rule on this or whatever? What was the... Uh, not guilty on all counts. Interesting. Um, because it's not illegal to have an off-label use. They had FDA approval. The FDA had a recommendation that you obtain specific approval. But my point here is that a federal prosecutor went after this guy, CEO of a medical device company, uh, made his life into a wreck, cost him $20 million, none of none of which is recoverable, uh, even though it was a completely malicious prosecution. Uh, none of which is recoverable. Uh, he's only able to defend it because he's a head of a billion dollar company. Um, and uh, there was no crime. There was no crime at all because that statement, that lie could not possibly lead to a fraudulent result. Can't do it. The um, purpose in all of this, Destiny, uh -huh. is to let you know because it doesn't seem like you do, that for a fraud to occur, that the lie in question, the false representation, must be able to produce, or no, sorry, must be able to induce a party to an act that will cause a detriment or a benefit. Those two statements that you keep talking about, that they were, that they assembled at the Capitol and that they were elected by the legislature, cannot induce the legislature to choose them as a slate of electors. They just can't. The legislature can choose them as a slate of electors knowing that they didn't do it beforehand and knowing that they didn't meet at the Capitol because they have the authority to do so. So no harm can possibly occur from this. It cannot induce it. Even though the legislature may have imposed a requirement on itself to say, well, here's what our form is gonna look like for electors. Similarly, the president can probably appoint more justices than nine, even though the Judiciary Act says there's only nine. I'm trying to, I'm not trying to jump here, but I'm giving you an analog into where plenary authority conflicts with a process that is created. Just because there's a Judiciary Act that has been amended to say we have nine Supreme Court justices does not prevent Joe Biden from nominating another justice and the Senate from approving them because he, they can't be bound by this rule can't do it okay so then you're uh what you're essentially saying then is all of the parts of these indictments based on this is a politically trumped up the prosecution the judge none of them have any idea about how fraud works they're all misunderstanding and because the state legislatures at any point in time could have said well we're going to go with this alternate slate of electors that all lied when they said they were the duly elected ones but they could be in the future um can you think of any reason a uh, prosecutor um, would want to be the prosecutor that indicts and convicts Donald Trump outside of just getting good justice for the country? I mean, I can think, can you of, think that. of any reason. Yeah, of course. 
Can you think of any reason why Trump's DOJ, all of his intelligence agencies, 90% of his actual legal counsel, everybody in the White House, all of his own appointments, all of his own uh, VPs, DOJ, all these people, all of these people were telling him consistently that you didn't win the election. All of the state representative Rappensburger, people that are lifelong Republicans, all these people. At the end of the day, if we're gonna play this like, well, isn't it weird that this happened? Or don't you think this might be the case? Isn't the most obvious outcome that Trump was lying the entire time and he just wanted to stay in power? Doesn't that literally explain every single part of this, every single action so cleanly and smoothly, and it makes sense in every single part of the story, rather than assuming that there are 500 different malignant actors lying under oath, lying to the media, all collaborating behind the scene, no evidence of any of this, by the way. Like, wouldn't that make the most sense? That's a false choice. Um, isn't, would it similarly make the false choice, that Trump, or similarly make uh, sense that Donald Trump legitimately believed that there was elector fraud, even, even if he was wrong? If that, he legitimately believed it and pursued it to the end that he felt constitutionally he was able to do. If that was the case, then Donald Trump should be under full-time care from a 24-7 keeper that doesn't let him out of the house because he might wander into traffic. If a man can be that delusional, that you have more information available to you at your fingertips than any other human being in all of human history, and every single piece of that information apparatus is returning you the exact same result from every state, from every county, from every elected official, from every appointed official, from every your re-election campaign, then at some point you go, you know what? This dude is either lying or he's fucking insane. Those are the you know what's only cool two options. About that? Yeah. We have two mechanisms by which we could remove a president for having that delusional belief. We're not removing a president, though. We're charging a man with crimes. We haven't even gotten into whether or not you can charge him with a crime for this. Well, I personally don't think that the uh, president is above the law. So I think if he committed crimes... He wouldn't be above the law again. That's the... That's, I'm sorry. Thing, I don't think that the law, law has a... Uh, I'm sorry. I don't believe that the law has a carve-out that the president can commit any crime that he wants and he doesn't get charged for it because we could hypothesize that in service of president, maybe that actually is the role of the president, is to pressure uh, Georgia election board officials with knowingly false data to circumvent their election. I don't believe that to be the case. But it's maybe a judge will and maybe they'll throw it out. You could be right. Maybe the judge will be like, no, actually, Trump has immunity from basically every single possible thing that he could do because we could surmise that anything could be the role of the president, right? So, I mean, that's possible well it's it's funny how you use uh super loaded language to like pithily make your point but the the cool thing about civil presidential immunity um is that the pithy like uh sarcastic language that you just used to like assume the answer uh -huh. is used in favor of the president in that respect and so likely if they do find that criminal immunity does exist for the president, which seems possible because in the civil immunity uh, decision, they actually alluded to the very likely outcome that a president has that criminal immunity. It just wasn't the question before the court at the time. The funny sarcastic thing is they would take this sarcastic approach in favor of the president in that one. And so like, I Do you think there's a, decent, there's a decent chance that these are just gonna be like just, thrown out then on that it, uh, immunity thing? If the Supreme Court finds that the president has criminal immunity similar to civil immunity, which is one of three options, again, no immunity, mm -hmm. similar to civil immunity, or full immunity, uh, absent impeachment, those are all options that they could do. Mm -hmm. But if they do the one that, that looks like the most likely outcome where anything within the outer perimeter of an act as president, which means anything even plausibly within the scope of the president is presumed to be inside the scope of the president and cannot be indicted uh, he cannot be indicted for it he cannot be questioned about it it will uh -huh. automatically fall in his favor the sarcastic cute entertaining way you just ask that question would be stated like this would it donald trump just genuinely believe that he had a constitutional responsibility to uphold and defend the integrity of the election and he would do so employing the doj even to the point where if he disbelieved his own people as the chief law enforcement officer of this country he had an obligation when all else failed to tell everybody to tell everybody in the nation that there was a fraud to try and lobby individual legislatures to go ahead and use their constitutional authority in any way possible and even to the extent of producing slates of electors uh -huh. that could be qualified by those legislatures or even maybe picked by Mike Pence under his questionable constitutional authority. 
He believed that. It's presumed that he believed that. Therefore, he is immune from suit. If they go with the civil standard, again, the cute, sarcastic, and entertaining way you phrase the question gets phrased, except in the exact opposite way. And okay, he's that's not possible. Guilty. If they if he's they if they ruled with that, would you support that ruling? If they ruled with that, if they ruled that the Trump that he that has Trump that immunity, immune, yeah, uh, yeah, of course. Okay, he would, goes I to would court. Actually, say I would. I would go uh -huh. with the Supreme Court ruling that the president has immunity from all criminal acts absent uh, absent an impeachment. Okay, so he walks into court. I don't court. think they will. Okay, Giuliani's there. His face is put together. Sidney Powell in the in the in the row on the behind. Okay, they make their argument. Day one. Judge decides to throw it all out. He says, actually, we've thought about this. He has immunity. Trump is walking out of the courthouse, and right there is the presidential motorcade. Trump grabs, uh, or Biden grabs Trump and his entire legal team, throws them in the back of the van, and then ships them off to Guantanamo and imprisons him there, and his family too, and all of his legal team for the rest of their lives. Mm -hmm. Would you support his ability to do that? Because as president, he kidnapped them because he thinks he has a legitimate fear that they might try to cause another January 6th riot in the future. You'd support the ruling on that too. Biden is taken to prison or, or Biden is charged with false imprisonment, kidnapping, all this. And the, the judge rules him. He's like, well, you know, he's the president reasonably, you know, especially on matters of national security. Yeah, I guess, you know, he maybe he really did think that another January yeah, 6th is going to happen. <clears throat> impeach him. Okay. But if he survives the impeachment process, you're good. There's no criminal charge there. That's fine. It's very uncomfortable to think about. No, no, hold on. It's not uncomfortable. You should easily say, yes, of course. The president should be allowed to do anything, especially if he survives the impeachment. Why, especially... Wait, why should the legal thing always be comfortable? Well, if you're, well, if you're principled, it's comfortable. I'm sorry, if you're being partisan, well, then it's sorry. not comfortable. Wait a minute. Yeah. <laughs> wait. I, I, I'm sorry, you wait. Like, Did you state a principle obligation to the law earlier when you said that if he gets immunity, it's because of these? Or was it just because you like Donald Trump? No, I'm not even the biggest fan of Trump at all. Okay, then principally, we should be able to say, yeah, Trump should be allowed to do this and Biden should be allowed to do this, right? Easy. I did say Biden should be allowed to do that. Impeach him. If that's if if he, they have <laughs> immunity from criminal suit, impeach him. Okay. And then once they're impeached, according to the Constitution, they can be charged criminally after that. Mm -hmm. What this if what if problem. what if what if in the what if in the course of that, what if Biden sees that he's going to be impeached? The vote is, uh, um, it's like 55%. What if mm -hmm. Biden really does feel like the country is going to be destroyed and he orders the assassination of 20% of Congress that votes against him? You'd be okay with that as well, right? To prevent the impeachment from going the wrong way? Would it be okay with Biden ordering an assassination? Legally, in a legal no. sense. Obviously, morally, we're not okay. But legally, you'd be so, yeah, he's got immunity from it. He's defending the country. He, he can order assassinations. Criminal. Obama did it to that one dude overseas, right? Why couldn't Biden do it? Yeah, that's a good question. Why can't he? Maybe the president shouldn't be above all criminal prosecution. Maybe that's not a criminal. It's not a criminal question. It's a political question. The president ordering people to go get killed. What if the president did it himself, or he told a guy to go kill them? That's a criminal question. Do you think the president should be allowed to do that because he genuinely fears for the safety of the nation? Impeach him. Well, they can't because he keeps him. killing all the people that are going to vote against him in the impeachment proceedings. <laughs> Is it isn't that uncomfortable? No, it's wacky, and I don't think. Do you, I don't think the judge. How, how you, do you stop? Like le legitimately, though, mm -hmm. how do you stop him? So the, the similar question, like it, I'm entertaining your uh, your uh, your, your uh, hypothetical here, mm -hmm. but the similar question is simple. Well, every time he's going to get criminally prosecuted, he just orders a military sniper to shoot the judge in the face. Yeah. Every time. Well, how could you ever prosecute this guy, right? Because every time he's going to go to court, everybody gets just murdered in the court. Just a, a JDAM hits the courthouse and just kills it. We'd probably arrest him, right? How? But he surrounds himself with Secret Service and uh, Special Forces, and every arresting authority comes after him. They just get shot in the face. Just a pile of bodies. Well, in front at of that the point, we're in I mean, a full on coup environment. And I guess we bring the military out. We see if they side with Biden or Congress. I mean, I don't know. Yeah, what you, know mean? you nailed it. Yes. No, you, you actually, thank you so much. Mm -hmm. You're 100% right. And this is the scariest part of the presidency. And I love that you said that because you think I'm joking, but I was leading you right to this thing. Mm -hmm. The president's power is the manifest will of the country that he represents. And it is limited by the manifestation of that will, but it is similarly empowered by the manifestation of that will. And if the political will of the country aligns with the president, no matter what, 
He has so much power to do exactly what you just said. De facto so or de jure? You think that like, if as long as, the, are you saying that like, well, if he's the president, he's popular enough, he can do whatever. Are you saying like by letter of the law, he actually has the power to do whatever he wants if he's popular enough? He's constrained by Congress through impeachment. And impeachment, it should be the only check on. It is the only check on presidential power. Because. Congress can pass laws all day. If the president doesn't do it, what happens? Well, we, I, we haven't Bush tested that yet, right? Bush did not. Bush did not. We can agree. Uh, Bush did not faithfully execute the Clean Air and Water Act, right? I don't know the details on that. I'll okay, assume what well, you're saying you, is true. I'm assuming what you're saying is true, sure. Yeah. Does anybody think that George Bush was great on uh, environmental concerns that the EPA would be trying to accomplish? I mean, he, he notably scaled back. He was sued by the Sierra Club for example, uh, for failing to protect coastal waters, I think in New Jersey, somewhere in the Northeast. Doesn't um, the Congress try to check the president if he's not doing like a good faith adherence to things? You'd think so. Well, what do they, they do? not? Hold on. That's not a question. Don't they try to do that if the president isn't like enforcing a law that Congress wants them to? Or if Congress made a law that said marijuana is legal all throughout the U.S. and the president's like, well, the DA is not going to change their policy. Like, wouldn't Congress or somebody uh, attempt to pass the law or hold accountable or what would they do pass another law uh i don't know have we i guess <laughs> yes this happened tons of times but uh it's it's happening right now on the border right joe biden is not faithfully executing the uh immigration national naturalization act and the the border uh the border protection laws that's why texas is uh trying to pass its own laws and can't you, can't you not fighting just, texas can't you remove the president from office yeah by impeachment Okay. Thank you. That, that's, but that's the thing, though, right? Impeachment only exists with the manifest political will overcoming the president. Correct? Uh, like you have to manifest a political will that's greater than his. I just don't I, don't. I don't understand what the... I mean, not necessarily. I don't know what you mean by manifest a greater political will. It's for, it's for impeaching okay, somebody. Now, you just need the votes in Congress. I don't know what you mean by manifest. That is political will, right? I mean, well, it depends on what you're talking about, right? Like if 99% well, of the country wanted to vote for Donald Trump because he did something that everybody loved, but Congress is still two years behind their election cycle, is it the manifest will of the people if they vote to impeach him? Or if people in Congress decide to vote to impeach him, even though the people don't want him to, we can imagine congressmen voting against the will of the people, right? So there's a lot of processes by which people could theoretically circumvent the will of the people, depending on what you decide the will of the people to be. Correct. And what happens? What happens when someone says no in government? Because law is just paper. So what happens when someone says it's it's really easy to say arrest him. It's really easy to say impeach him. It's really easy to say do this, do that. But we just we just take for granted that all this stuff works. Well, I think we take it for granted because we're not used to people like so flagrantly abusing it. But I mean, I imagine that if they do, then other the laws will is, be drafted or other laws will be passed and then we'll have other mechanisms in place. We feel like these types of leaders are going to be voted on in the future, right? Yeah, you'd think, unless they liked it. That, that's the, and that's what I'm talking about. It's, it's scary. Well, didn't they, it's didn't they shore up the ECA a little bit? Didn't they add seven lines to that? Because they're like, we're not entirely sure if the vice president could do this particular thing in the future, so we're going to amend this accordingly? And does it have any effect at all? Well, like, I mean, theoretically, the, if the president says he wants to do something and does whatever he wants, does it? I mean, at some point, I guess, yeah, okay, but you have to start we're, shooting we're, people, right? But we're getting into that. That's getting that's an absurd argument that we were talking about. And I like it because it really does. Because you're asking how it can it be uncomfortable? But it is like the reality is that our country allows for very uncomfortable outcomes um, because everybody operates on a handshake to prevent civil war effectively that's what goes on most of the time well so, yeah but like i mean uh, but what you're talking about this applies to every we've like reduced this so much that this applies to every single system of governance governance right kind of every I oh mean, yes but, absolutely like every communist every dictatorship every authoritarian every uh yeah. democrat like everything yeah and when you say it's, it's just paper about, that's also true right a parchment guarantee everything is just paper at the end of the day it's who has the bullets or who has the batons right sure that's right, true but that, that, that is true, but it's also uh, just because it applies to other systems of government that eventually uh, yeah, violence will, will out, right? Eventually violence will out applies to everything. My point, though, is that we have a lot of faith in what is written down or, or what is done here, mm -hmm. but the mechanisms that we actually have that are the legal process. Impeachment is the constitutional process to remove a president. There isn't another one, which is the 
single strongest claim for criminal immunity for a president that exists. Um, I'm not saying that the Supreme Court will find it. I'm saying that is the single strongest claim, that impeachment is specifically put into the Constitution uh, to remove a president. And it is an entirely political question because if a president is acting in accordance with the will of the country and they don't want to remove him, there you go. That's what that's what happens. If he's not acting in accordance with the will of the country and the law, then they'll just remove him. Um, I mean, if I, if I run down your same argument, then I can just say we can also find a remedy in the courts. If they have the political will of the people, if they are voting on presidents that are installing these, uh, f appointing these federal judges, if the local state people aren't voting out their mm -hmm. judges or their governors, then the same argument that you just made that the president could theoretically do anything, I could use it like, well, the courts also could find Trump guilty and convict him of all these crimes. Kind of, except no, because again, it, what I was getting to is that we have processes that as long as the Constitution is followed, these processes are there, they do exist. The confusing part of all this, and this is what I was, I tried to get to this way earlier, uh, and I'm gonna have to go really soon, yeah, but this, this is interesting stuff to me because we write down laws, like you just mentioned seven, uh, seven new lines added to the Electoral, College, Electoral Count Act, right? Yeah. Um, because they're, they're like, oh, we don't want Mike Pence to do this, but that doesn't mean anything. If Mike Pence has an authority, or the vice president has an authority under the Constitution to count and, and certify or whatever the, the electors that come in, then he has that authority. The extent of that authority can't be constrained by Congress. But Congress can't just make a law that says this is what it is. This is what it is. I mean, they could, they could write the law all day. I was getting to this with the, the fucking Judiciary Act. They can write a law that says there's nine justices, but there can be more because you can't constrain the president by just writing a law. If it's in the constitution that the president has a sole power of appointment and that the Senate can has the sole power of- uh, I, I understand what of, you're of, saying. Of I'm just saying that like you've reduced everything to nothing. Like anything can happen I at this point. You have though. Congress could no, theoretically, Congress could write a law and pass it and say, actually Congress nominates a prime minister and it could go yes. for a judicial review and the Supreme Court would say, actually, yeah. And now you've lost the president. So why yeah. couldn't that happen? So, but at this point we can do anything. I mean, theoretically, right? We could say that tomorrow a Supreme Court uh, decides to hear a case for whether or not uh, a person can have an abortion saying, uh, I'm aborting this baby because it's black. And does that violate its civil rights? And in their, penning their opinion, uh, maybe Alino, Alito says, you know what, actually, we looked at this case and we actually decided that I'm gonna be the president of the United States. And, they, and then Alito can pass that to take control of the armed forces. I mean, that could happen, right? It could happen, right? It's on paper. But, but I mean, like, well, paper, I mean, anything could, happen. anything, yeah, but like, what does any of this mean? I mean, like, at this point, we're in, like, the absurdo land, like, but where anything this, could happen and anything could do anything, like, what? You're taking it to absurdo land because you took it to absurdo land, and I thought it was a useful way to illustrate, well, like, but, how terrifying and uncomfortable the law can be because... Just because we're in absurdo land doesn't mean we have to be for the discussion at hand. We don't have to go there. I agree with you 100%, but the problem is- So is why are you bringing up absurdo land as a problem? Because the defenses matter. of Donald Trump are absurdo land. That's the They're issue. Absurdo land. If we wanted to have an argument of like, was George W. Bush in good faith utilizing the EPA to man, you know, from the mission that Congress gave Bush, or is, is Biden truly enforcing the border like Congress? Those are interesting questions. I find it wholly uninteresting to think, does the ex president of the United States have infinite protection from all criminal prosecution if he was attempting through multiple, obviously immoral, most likely illegal means, yet to be decided, uh, ways to circumvent the electoral process, well, maybe the president should have that authority. That's an absurd land question. That's in the same realm as Alito uh, writing himself to be the leader of the world and as Pelosi leading the House to say that the Senate is abolished and as the president saying, I can kill someone on Fifth Street and get away from it because I can't be prosecuted for a crime because I thought they were a national defense uh, issue. Like, I, I think it's all absurd to land here. Yeah. I, I know you do. It's clear that you do. But you, you said something that I just got to go ahead and, and, yeah. and drop in do on. It. You said circumventing the election. At no point does Trump ever circumvent any electoral process. But he tries Everything to. Everything. He, he, he asks people to use their authority to do a thing, and they don't do it. He asks people. They to have the authority to do it. And he says, I think you should do this because I see this and here's my, here's my reasoning for it. And they go, nah, fam. And they don't do it. And then what happens on the 20th? He leaves. Does the cop have the authority to arrest somebody? 
uh, cops have the authority to cause. Yeah. If I go to a cop and I say, hey, arrest that guy. I just saw him murder 15 people. Am I okay, okay. to do that because the cop has the authority to do that? Or am I in trouble because there's a total lie? <laughs> Here's the thing. <laughs> Tell you me. Are, okay, talk out of this one. Yeah. It's a completely <laughs> different scenario. Okay. You're making a false police report. You are trying to deprive someone of civil rights based on a falsity. That's what Trump the indictment is- about Trump rests on. If it is the case, I think we both agree with it. We can both agree with this. If it comes out in court, if Trump is able to prove that he actually did think all of these things were true, then like 80% of these indictments fall off the map. If he really did think that he was making true claims, it's possible that like a ton of these just fall completely off the map. See, using, using a false analogy like this is, is frustrating because you're trying to equate the two acts. Okay. If the person believed that a person just killed 15 people in front of them because they saw them drop a bag, right? Mm-hmm. And the bag, uh, and they saw them drop a bag and, and run off uh, to a different area. And then a bomb goes off and 15 people die. You go, hey, I saw that guy drop a bag. Could have had a bomb in it. That, that's the guy. I think that's the guy, right? Police goes to arrest that guy. Wasn't, a, wasn't that guy. His bag was innocuous. He dropped it because uh, he had to run and take a piss. I don't know. Whatever reason he dropped it. That's not a fraud. That's not a false statement to the police. Even though you're wrong, he makes a claim. And he has, at that point, a reasonable purpose to making the statement. You presume Trump has no reasonable purpose. Correct. Probably because you don't like Trump. Or it's because of the 150 some statements that have been recorded of people saying this claim is false, and then Trump Which repeating I'll the claim. Just conveniently support your position that you don't like Trump. It's all. It and, also uh, is conveniently supported that of the 62 cases he filed, 61 were tossed out, 11 by federal judges that he appointed. It's also convenient that William Barr, the sword and shield of Donald Trump, also turned against him and said it was all bullshit. It's also convenient that every single lawyer in his old counsel seems to be testifying against him and not backing up. It also seems to be the case that Giuliani has admitted that some of the claims that he made, especially the ones in Georgia were literally just lies, but it was the first amendment to right to make them. It's also convenient that Tucker Carl, like I, there's a million things that are just convenient on my side. Now you're alleging some much grander thing that you have no evidence under oath for, or no evidence at all no, for, but I I'm mean- not alleging anything. Well, you're alleging, you're alleging that Donald Trump had good reason to believe these things for, with no- I didn't say he had good reason to believe. I just said he, he can have a genuine good faith belief that election fraud occurred and he can pursue it to the maximum within his authority. And I think he did. What constitutes a, a genuine, good good, what constitutes genuine good faith? If you believe something, go for it. You're, you're asserting he doesn't believe it. Yes. You've said that multiple times. Yes. Well, then I will assert he does. Okay. There you go. Then so I would ask I you, what is does, your evidence for it? He says he believes it. So if someone says they believe it, that's sufficient evidence to ascertain that they do believe it? Prove to me they didn't. Th- is, that how, is that how that works? If, if for an affirmative yes. defense or whatever? If I'm in court and I say, well, I thought that guy was going to kill me. Well, you, I, well, do you, I automatically have, get off it? You have to prove that, they, that he doesn't believe it. Like, that is actually Jack Smith's burden. You that is the burden, of course. It. And the burden are the hundred-some statements and all of the other people telling him. But I, I'm curious, and I know you have to go because I don't want to, like, yeah. I'm just curious for you. What would you have to see besides, like, a confession to think that Donald Trump was, was lying when he was pursuing voter fraud? What would it take for you to say, like, oh, okay, he probably didn't believe any of this shit? A confession. That's, that's the only thing that would... You'd have to have a statement that... that you have to have a statement that by beyond any reasonable doubt leads you to the conclusion that he didn't believe it. Is there any other mens rea criminal conviction that requires a confession to prove the, the state of mind? I said confession in response to you asking for a confession. Well, I'm saying besides a confession said, because everybody says, well, well a confession, said, obviously. any yeah. statement uh-huh. that leads you beyond a reasonable doubt to the conclusion that they don't believe it. What would like the statement, have, what would like a statement be? I don't know. It's, it's tough to build those cases. That's, that's why these things it's are It's not really hard tough to, to build those cases. We prove criminal convictions all the time in the United States without a person saying, like, I am doing this criminal act, and I know it's a criminal act. We do Wait, that do all the time, don't we? Do you think it's easy to do it, though? I think it happens all the time. I mean, it's not easy. It's yeah, criminal does it, court. Does that make it easy? I, well, when you've got a person that lies and talks to literally every single person no, admitting to criminal behavior constantly, like the Mar-a-Lago case, I mean, it kind of is easy. I guess it depends, but I guess I don't, we'll see you in court, I guess, huh? We might not, because you might be immune to it. True. Okay. Well, hey, listen, I, it's fun shouting at you. Uh, hope you didn't, you know, <laughs> I like the, I like the fighting. It's fun. I love talking to you, man. I, it's, uh, I, I enjoy it. I know a bunch of the audience is, is super mad at me. Um, guys, I, I got to tell you, uh, this guy's great. 
and you should listen to him. He's very smart and he reasons through stuff. Um, but you have a lot of problems that people aren't talking to you about with all of these prosecutions. You have a lot of problems that people aren't talking to you about with the application of the 14th Amendment, which we didn't even get to. Um, you have a lot of problems with whether a president is acting within or without of his purview, or whether it matters, uh, with uh, conflicts of plenary authority versus, um, versus uh, criminal processes, which is going to come up also in the uh, stolen documents case from Mar-a-Lago, which you just mentioned, uh, whether or not a president has to declassify anything. Well, I don't think that's. His, I don't think that's even relevant to the Mar-a-Lago case, right? Yeah, of course it is. Uh, but we well, I mean, because a lot, a lot right of those now. charges are like obstruction and stuff like that. It, whether he thought it or not, and retention of national defense secrets, which even if he declassified them, wouldn't matter. But I understand the whole other thing. Maybe, right. but anyway, there, right. there's a lot of considerations and a lot of power that is just unexplored and undiscussed, and the media oversteps all of the questions when they talk about it. And so, um, this is fun. But uh, the, the questions are bigger than these discussions. And uh, really, challenge yourselves on it. Don't let your uh, love or hatred of any politician get you there. Um, I find it all funny. I want to see what happens. I don't care if Donald Trump goes to prison forever. I really don't. Uh, I just think that the exploration of executive power is the most interesting thing that's happened uh, in my lifetime. So I agree. Let's, uh, let's yeah. see. All right, guys. Catch y'all later. Uh, thanks, buddy. Yeah, Talk thanks a lot for Peace. coming by. Have a good one. Bye. Peace. Jesus. I wasn't ready for the for the future uh, the the future retroactive choosing of the electors argument. <laughs> oh man. It was harder Ricada or Rob Noor. Um they both have their uh, things. I feel like both of them are probably going to be more difficult than Jones or Greenwald, though, so. You think all the Trump defenders so far have been bad faith? Um, I don't know. It's hard to accuse people of bad faith, because you, sometimes you can get, like, so lost in something that you're missing something. I, like, it could be happening for me in some arguments. Um, I won't call any of them bad faith. Yet. But, um, yeah, I do wish that I could represent or I could present like some of the facts of these um, cases as like Democrats instead, because I absolutely feel like they would not be making the same arguments if these were Democrats doing these options instead of Republicans. But I, but obviously the cases are so popular, I don't know if I ever could. Like if Biden had been trying to toss out electoral college votes for Hillary Clinton, I think Republicans would have lost their mind. There is absolutely no shot that Republicans would think, well, you know, Biden is just, he's following the electoral process and, you know, they, other states have the right. Like, there is no shot. There is no shot. So the false state wasn't just a standby group of electors? No, that's a lie. The false slate of electors was, I'm sorry, let me, I'll explain this real quick because there are other people here that aren't aware of this, okay? So when you when your citizens have cast their vote, okay, your state, I don't know, I should figure out the body. Your, I don't know if it's state legislature or like your election board or whatever, but basically they get together and they empower a group of people to sign a piece of paper saying, here's our electoral college votes. We're gonna go ahead and shoot these off now to uh, NARA. Uh, and then NARA passes it along to Congress, basically. And this is your process by which you uh, send your state's electoral college votes um, for certification. What Eastman hatched they do, and what they did do, in Arizona, Georgia, Michigan, New Mexico, Nevada, Pennsylvania, and Wisconsin, what they did was, was they brought seven citizens together in each state, and they got them to lie and say that, um, uh, by the way, uh, here are duplicate originals of Michigan's electoral votes for president and vice president. Um, we, the undersigned, being the duly elected and qualified electors for president and vice president of the United States of America from the state of Michigan, do hereby certify the following. That's a lie. They're not duly elected and they're not qualified electors. That we convened and organized in the state capitol, and this is a lie, they weren't allowed into the state capitol. That being so assembled and duly organized, we proceeded to vote by ballot and balloted first, uh, d uh, they were assembled and organized, sure. And that the following are two district lists, one and all that, yeah. So this is, um, and then they got these people to uh, sign their 
slates. Um, and then they got these people to transmit these votes to NARA in an attempt to get Pence to look at them and then say, wow, well, I don't know what's going on here, guys. We're going to have to we're going to have to throw this over to the House like we can't. Uh, yeah, looks like we got too many slates of electors. But that's what uh, that's what this scheme was. And this was hatched. This was done in all seven states. Uh, all of these states transmitted false electors uh, that were supposed to look like the real ones. The idea that Ricada, that state legislatures can just randomly choose to ignore popular vote and decide who wins is absurd. Every state has already decided to hold a popular vote. They can't just ran Well, maybe, actually. I don't know about that. States have a lot of power in running their own elections. It might be that state legislatures could decide that. Obviously, the people would have a huge problem with it. It probably wouldn't actually play out that way. But like, I think states do have a lot of power when it comes to running their elections. Um, but... How close do you think Trump was to pulling this scheme off? Um, uh, I mean, t theoretically, he was really close and really far away at all points in time. If more people in government would have went along with him, then maybe, um, maybe he could have done it. But I mean, it's, uh, he got rebuked at every step of the way, right? Like arguably Pence alone could have thrown a wrench into things, but like Congress could have fought him on it and it wouldn't have worked that way. Um, if Rosen or Donahue in the DOJ would have written the false letters that Trump wanted, that could have convinced some states to flip their stuff. If Raffensperger or other people in any of the state legislatures decided that they didn't want, or that any of the governors decided that they didn't want to um, certify their vote because they believe Trump, that could have happened. Uh, I mean, theoretically, there's a lot of different um, there's a lot of different ways that this could have worked, but it seemed like nobody wanted to go along with it. Have you looked at the document of evidence for fraud released by Trump in prep for the upcoming debates? Uh, we looked at that the night that it came out. I just super don't give a fuck. What a stupid fucking document. I, like I would, anybody that cites this, um, somebody can link it. There's not even a, there's not even a fucking signature on the document. How embarrassing. How embarrassing for you to even tweet that out. Nobody even wants to take credit. That's how, that's how delegitimized all of Trump's claims are. There's not even an author for that document. <laughs> What's your opinion on the 14th Amendment being applied? I'm not thinking about it much because I think the Supreme Court's going to shoot it down, so I don't care. I'm just not as interested in it. Besides, I haven't spent much time. It might be legitimate. It might not be. There's that huge paper by um, Paulson. If you want to go read that and see their arguments. And then there was a response paper written. You can go and look at that, too. So. Under what argument do you think the Supreme Court will strike it down? I'm not sure. That'll be interesting to read the majority opinion. Still no mention of the chain of custody being broken during the Democratic ballot counting. Ha, huh? LeMayo? Yeah, because there is no evidence of that chain of custody being broken. They did, I think it was two recounts and an audit. Um, and everybody's investigated this up and down. Georgia's investigated the fuck out of it. The DOJ investigated the fuck out of it. I think the DHS and the FBI, although those, that might have just been the machines. Everybody, nobody, nobody believes your chain of custody bullshit. Um, the chain of custody, I don't believe, was ever broken on any of the Georgia shit. You can keep claiming it over and over and over again, but there's no evidence of that anywhere, so...